Hey, we're back. For Division 2. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah, we're gonna co op with Mr. Enoch soonish, I guess. Because I need to finish the tutorial. Hmm. Imagine that. Priority mission highlighted. Proceed to the marker. Okay. Over here! Agent! Meet oh. me at the gate! Am I sprinting? You. Agent, follow me. There you go. I need right now. Jump over it. There you are. Police, yeah. South threat detected. Take cover. Ready. Got it, Agent. Coming behind that barrier. Incoming hostiles. Bonk. Reload. Keep firing. And take them out. Let me keep coming. Get off the line. Dead. I'm not a silent protagonist, am I? This does look cool, though. Washington, D.C. How is this possible? Bro. Get down! Everybody get down! Someone has to stay. We can't just leave these people here. Whatever happened, it needs to be fixed or it's all over. You go! I'll do what I can here. Go! First thing to do is lower the in-game sound whenever I can. We took things for granted. We expected coffee in the morning. We expected free Wi-Fi. Yeah, all right. When those were taken from us, we survived. When communications broke down, the trains stopped and the internet went dark, we survived. Really, though? But when the pharmacies were looted and hospitals shut down, Asthma became lethal. And with no police to protect you, did you own a gun? Did your neighbor? Some survived. Wife. We are a resilient species. When our society collapsed, we found ways to go on. And now, for the first time in centuries, what we want is also truly what we need. In the face of disaster, wow. we, we helped, helped each, each other. other. We built new communities in the ruins of the old. We yeah. adapted. We, we helped survived. each other finish sentences. Established a new normal. 
But there are also those who build nothing. Create nothing. Hyenas preying on the weak. Wait, what? They've made our world bleed. But we don't stand alone. A brave few have sworn to protect us and save what remains. They, they unite, unite us. us. Remind us that we are one people. They are our shield. They are the division too. Light. But if that light goes out... Who can save us then? Me. It's been seven months since the outbreak. Wait, what? Outbreak? We still live in fear of the virus. Green poison. The real danger is out there. Waiting. Oh, looks good though. Title card. Awesome. Massive entertainment. It looks like a war zone. Imagine that. F. Hold the skip. Nah. Oh, it's me. Nice. Click, click. Right. Incoming alert on the SHD emergency channel. Flash priority. The base of operations is under attack. Hostile forces have breached our southern perimeter. We are in need of immediate assistance. Wait, Repeat, that's a shotgun. We need immediate assistance from any nearby agents. Nice. Alright, let's go. Reach the White House lawn. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Do, 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 do. How would you know I was hiding, dude? How did that miss? Hi, bye. 
Looks like they've uh -huh. cut down a group of hyenas and are headed this way. Agent, if you can hear us on this frequency, keep pushing forward and blindside these bastards. Yes. That's what I will do, sir. Let's go. Nah, there we go. Wait, that nest? What do you mean, that nest? That's my guy. Yep. Wait, I missed something. Grenade. There you go. Coordinates. Base of operations. All right, just a bit uh, lowering the audio. Yes. There you go. Hey, thanks for the help out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check in with Manny, our coordinator. Upstairs in the room. And come by here if you ever need help with the tech. Come by where though? Good. Cutscene. This is you. Behind the corner. I'm Manny. I run comms. I'm guessing the divisional alert brought you here? Yes. Damn yeah, glad to see you. Let me show you exactly how screwed we are. Ever since the JTF imploded, I can't believe I'm a silent protagonist. Playground for murderous fuckheads. There are several main factions. And a whole lot of bottom feeders sucking up whatever the big dogs miss. A few civilian settlements are still holding out against all this villainy. Uh. We need more help than we've been able to provide, especially since the division network went dark. Um, that's Kelso. <laughs> She's one of the last surviving agents in DC. She's operating at the theater settlement on a priority mission. You should go check in with her. Sure, if anyone check knows in. how to get these systems back online, it's her. Okay. Let's oh, go. and um, introduce yourself to the locals while you're at it. It'll comfort them to know there's a new sheriff in town. Nice. Bang bang. By the way, agent, head downstairs and check in with the quartermaster. What's this? Can get you set up with some division tech. You're gonna need the edge. Uh, the challenge. Game of the sand solo. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Skill unlocked. Oh, nice. Just in time. We've got a new skill for you. Which one do you want? Hmm. Pulse. What does it do? What does it do? Close your lock. Uh-huh.
vehicle comes a number of variants. Let's go with uh -huh. okay. That's a basic turret, yep. What are you? Well, what does it do? See command on shield. Yeah, let's go to turret. Nice. Need to equip it. Uh, let's go Q. Quartermaster, right. Key and back. Later. The Peter settlement is off to the east. You probably run into some trouble along the way. You'll have to do this. Agent, we've just received a distress call from New York. There's been an Jesus. attack on the division. 400 and they requested Ugh. immediate support. Meet me on the White House South Lawn. There's a helicopter prepped for us. We need to leave now. Alright, is the co op unlocked? No, no, that's not it. Depends on line. Cop, you gonna? Oh yes, now I can play. Okay, uh, let me just ring up Mr. Enoch. I'm done with the tutorial. No, that natural white is good. Meh. Oh God, that's so bright. Oh, that's him. That's him. Supposed to make it way too dark. That's what it looks like when I don't have the light on. Don't the tutorial? Awesome! I'm downloading a six gig update. It's gonna take me 14 minutes. Oh, wait, what? I'll be there. So go ahead and just get started. Keep running, wise. If you want, we can go ahead and jump into a call. I'm fine with that. Uh, but yeah. Well, I'm streaming. It'll probably be less, but the fact that I'm streaming, it's eating up some of my internet. So. Yeah, f uh, about 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's going pretty quick. So, but you know, I got a 6 gig update uh, that I did not know about. So, build up. 14 minutes, imagine that. Yeah, 14 minutes. We're going to call him? Well, it sounds good. I mean, if you want to give me a call, I call you. How does this work? Uh, I don't yeah. know how this engine works. Table one. Here, I call you. Table one. Or you just said something. Table one? Two. Boo. Boo, hello. I scared you. No, you didn't. No, you did Dang not. It. I was expecting you. Hmm, <laughs> good. Wait, how does six gigabytes equals fourteen minutes? My internet, that's how. Hey, yikes! Yeah, dude, it, it's been worse. It's been way worse, honestly. I mean, I remember when I had internet where it used to take me a day to download one gig of data. Jesus! Literally. Yeah, that's what it's like to live out in the boonies, dude. Where you live out in the sticks, where well, you live in a state that nobody really cares about too much, so the development isn't exactly as quick. So, yeah. Uh, is that correct? Do I see players with a rank for 5,000? Or level 5,000? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. What the yep, heck? Nope, that's... Well, so that's a gear... Uh, okay, I gotta make sure I correct myself here. That's a shade level. So, the base game, you got... 30 levels. The okay. DLC, the Warlords of New York, adds in another 10 levels. So you, it's up to 40. Then, once you complete all of that and get to a certain point after all the story of the DLC and whatnot, you then go in to Shade Level. Which, a Shade Level is, if I'm not mistaken, it's almost a uncapped number, I believe. I don't, if there might be a cap, I don't know about it. But it's essentially almost completely uh, uncapped and uh, essentially just keeps going up. Now, gear and all that kind of stuff stops at 40 or 30, one of the two, whichever it is. Um, 
So once it gets to there, that stays there. But your shade levels are pretty much your character level. And at that point, that just shows how long you've been playing the game. You just get a steady oh. amount of um, XP as you just keep playing the game. Every so level, you get essentially a point that you can put into things like uh, health, ammo, carrying, weapon handling, weapon damage. It's just an all-encompassing kind of uh, stats. Oh, so, so it's basically just uh, which, what you might call it a reason to play the game. Yeah, pretty much. It's an additional thing where just the longer you play the game, you do get stronger, so that's where because you keep playing if it's for like those who keep playing the game like even after the main story and everything else is done as you're still playing it does essentially reward you it's not just you replaying a bunch of stuff needlessly you're getting back something you're still earning xp it's kind of like a i don't know bottomless barrel almost that you can keep pumping xp into i guess you could say no okay so, okay i get it i get it and and you actually get something back because your level your shade level keeps going up and you're given points every level. It's not hard to get levels, honestly. I don't, it's not like... I actually don't think... You know how like in some games where it's like, oh, you have 30 levels, but once you complete a level, the next to achieve the next level, you have to achieve a slightly higher XP level? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty sure... I gotta check, it's been a minute, but I'm pretty sure this doesn't have that. It just is always like, as soon as you get X amount of XP, you get a point that you can then put into a stat, and it's just constantly that, pretty much. So, oh, okay, 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 okay. I so, get it, I get it. So yeah, it essentially just shows off how long someone's been playing the game. So as soon as you see like a tiny little icon next to the level, uh, and then the level itself, if there's like no, I think it's like a little, I think it's like the division icon, so it's like a, the eagle or whatever, the bird. Um, I, I see I'm, the 5,000 level guys has two wings and a five next to it. Okay, so the two wings and a five, that is actually his, um, ooh, what's that called? Uh, what is that called? Uh, so actually, the no, the little icon next to the 5,245 is like a little arrow. That's what it is, okay. That is, that indicates that that's his shade level. Oh. So anybody else that has like a 13 or a 14, but if they don't have that, it means that they are like the base game, 13. Ah. So, yeah. detected. And then, uh, but then the little wings, uh, those are, uh, that means, actually, that's kind of a feature I kind of liked about this game, is that that shows that that is a player who responds to um, help requests whenever you go down. Because if you get down, you can request help, and then uh, it'll be sent to other people that are willing to help out someone who gets down, so then they can spawn in your world, come pick you up, and then they can help fight, essentially, until the end of the mission. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But that pretty much indicates how much they have been doing that, so it kind of means that they're a nice person. They respond to that stuff. So, so assume you're at zero? Is that a fair assessment? You don't help anyone? Uh, I think I'm a one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I've helped a few. I've helped a few. I help people when I can. Uh, just turns into a gear score dilemma until New York uh, to hit level 40, then another gear game plus shade levels. Yeah, a, a bunch of stuff like that. It's interesting. So, so can, can I start the main campaign without you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's drop in, drop out co op. You can literally be in the middle of a mission. I can just drop in. As oh, okay, game. okay, so, okay. Yeah, no, it's open world, you run around, pretty much, yeah, you can go ahead and get the going, don't wait for me, just start playing away, I'll just sit here, I got there seven minutes, I'm like halfway done, so, and uh, kids. no, as and soon as it's ready, I'll drop in, then I can, can we just friend each other, and then I'll literally just drop into your game, for the theater settlement. run with you, so. Situation, we no, I, well, we are friends on Ubisoft platform, so. We are, so, yep, no, should be all, as long as you're friends on Ubisoft, then I should be able to just drop into your game instantly, Okay. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna go main campaign, start the theater, yep. mm -hmm. and you yep. can uh, join in whenever. Yep, it has drop in, drop out as long as you have your uh, matchmaking thing set. No, to let me check. Friends can join. Uh, uh, gameplay. No. Yeah. That. 
Let me check the settings on no, that. Oh, wait, that. social. I think it's... Yeah, social, there you go. Uh, wait, it's Friends Online, Region Europe, of course. Oh, I can invite okay, you to the so group. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Best choice I did was not skip New York. It was nice progressing through the missions. It was. Honestly, I agree. I kind of wish I did because I kind of just rushed through New York and a bunch of other stuff. And I feel like we've had this discussion before. I made the mistake where if I rush through a game trying to catch up to other people who have already been playing the game, I miss out on what attracts me to the game. At which point... I'm not going to be playing the game unless I'm playing with other people, but even then, it's not grabbing my attention as much. At least that's for me. Ooh, actually, I was thinking about this. Uh, been watching some interesting clips and stuff like that on the Yuba tubes, and I actually heard about a certain game. I didn't know it existed. Um, or anything, but uh, ended up hearing about it, and stuff like that and it never actually came through i don't think it ever got fully developed it was uh it's uh it was supposed to be a moab game so like smite and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um and you know, you know like dota 2 and all that kind of stuff and whatnot uh, i think dota 2 is a moab game anyway anywho um it was an interesting game it was called like gates of something or watergate or something like that i'm not entirely sure it was going to be, uh, EA was the publisher, but they pulled a plug on it or something like that. But uh, I recently found a guy that was talking about it because he was actually working on the game. Oh. And they had what I believe, at least so far from what I can think of, a pretty ingenious way to um, combat toxicity. Which, honestly, I think this was kind of unique. I was trying to run over my head a bit, and I'm kind of curious what other people in my chat, as well as Wise chat, uh, has to say. So, what they did to combat toxicity in... Because a lot of those games are typically pretty toxic. So, what they did is pretty ingenious, I feel like. Is they made it so that when you play a game... I'm pretty sure it didn't matter if you win or lost. If you played a game, you would earn one XP for just leveling up in everything, pretty much. The, uh, the progression system, you got one point for just playing the game, like finishing it. So that way, if you skipped out, if you jumped out of the game early, nothing. So it kept people in the game longer. And another thing that they did is that when you were playing with other people, literally you could thumbs up or thumbs down people, I think, or the way they said it is that you could uh, commend someone. You can either leave them alone or you commend them. Now, uh, you can commend as many people as you want. You just can't commend your own friends. So this, which was pretty genius. But what happened is by, if you received a, uh, a commend from someone, either a friendly teammate or an opposing teammate, either way, you would earn additional experience or whatever. So what would happen, and you could get as many as you want. Like, you can give out as much as, essentially... It was like a reputation system almost, where players, if you liked the way the other people were, you would commend them, and they would uh, essentially level up faster. Now, technically what this means is that if you go into a lobby and you're extremely toxic or negative and you're just a bad teammate and all that kind of stuff, if you're not playing friendly with anybody else on your team, they can just not commend you and you would have to grind your levels. And the way it was actually, uh, they had it also set up where, like, if you just completed the game, you get a point. If you get a one, uh, like, recommendation or thumbs up or whatever, you get an, an additional two points. And then, like, the next two uh, recommendations or thumbs up that you get from players, you get, like, an additional, like, six points or something like that. So meaning, the more people you got to like you and play when you were playing a game and being friendly with, the more people that gave you a thumbs up or, or uh, you know, commend you and everything for your behavior, it became easier to level up. Now, it did cap out at like 30 something, so that way it wasn't gonna be like all powerful. So like the most you can earn is like 32 points a game. But at the bare minimum was one point. If you did not play the game friendly, you were not a team player and other people didn't give you any, you know, thumbs up. 
So what this meant is essentially is, at least the idea behind it is, if you were a negative player and toxic and did not play with the team and, you know, just all bad things essentially, then pretty much what that meant is you would be spend, it would take you 30 times longer to level up and progress through the game compared if you were just being a good teammate and being friendly. Now, at first thought, so far, from the several times that I've thought over this system, I thought it's a pretty good system. I couldn't think of too many negative sides, because again, like, they made it so you couldn't cheese the system. Friends couldn't commend each other. So you couldn't jump into a game with a bunch of friends and have them just commend you and you get all the points and stuff like that. That's not how that worked. So you would still have to play friendly with other random people that were not on your friends list and such. So that's one thing that they did. And uh, again, it's uh, you wouldn't earn any points if you left a game, so it kept you in the game playing it to the end. Because you know how some people jump out of the game before the end, which just ruins it for everybody else on your team. Oh, yeah, yeah, What yeah. game is this for? I'm actually not... I don't remember the full name, Sinful. It's not... The game got pulled. It didn't get made. But the, I found a video of someone who was being a developer on the game, and it was called something like Water Gates, or I think the, the words Water and Gate were in the title, but I'm not entirely sure. It was a Moab game. It was supposed to... It was supposed to stump Dota, as well as a few other games. Um with its mechanics and stuff like that, and also be toxic-free, or at least help combat it. Because, again, the way it worked is that the only way to you could level up if you uh, just played the game, but it would be an excruciating grind. Like, it would take you, like, you know, 30 times longer just to get to some... Well, you would have to play 30 games to get where somebody else got when they played one game think about that if you were a bad teammate or you did not play friendly with people so then that's kind of where it was all based off of the players so if you were a good teammate or even like when i say good not like skillful but even if you were just like a positive influence in the game then you would potentially get higher rewards now yes there could be some downside to this but there is actually something similar to this in hell let loose actually where by playing the game, uh, <clears throat> where pretty much kind of the, I guess, best way to put it, uh, where in Hell Let Loose, the way that worked is that when you're playing, you can only be uh, commended by two other players. So when they do that, you get a little extra XP. Now, it's not like anybody can do it. It's only a couple people. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting concept. Um veterans uh, more leeway of toxicity that is true kuko that is very true but also keep in mind in order to become a veteran you would have had to play and grind the game for probably 20 years damn of non-stop grinding to get anywhere near what a veteran would be considered but understandably some people could you know play friendly get high ranked and then be negative that is also true that's where i feel like a system like that would even be better if you made it where like, I don't know if you want to make it where people could lose levels. Like, hey, if you start playing Toxic, then your level people can thumbs down you, in which case your overall level will go down. I don't know how well that would work in the actual game mechanic of things, but it's an interesting concept. Not perfect, obviously. I don't feel like there's any kind of a perfect system out there for stuff like that, but meh. Who knows? You be commended the uh, more than two. Uh, I've had. Is it three? Okay, I wasn't sure. Well, uh, Dota two has a system to basically combat toxic people with How the uh, behavior score. If you get reported, you just push down and just play with griefers. Oh. It's basically a separate queue. Well, now that's an interesting. Idea. And you can actually get out of it, but it's like. Tough. Because I do have a friend that's in there. Okay. Oh, hey, what level are you right now in game? Uh, two. Okay. I've I just a, I, I just reached the, the theater. Okay, I have a character that's level four. Do you want me to just use them? No, it doesn't matter, actually. It's okay, because I don't want to way. that really hard. 
Okay. Well, until I jump in, who knows? Yeah, sure, but still. Some groups of people who bomb down anyone they dislike would bomb down. Exactly. That's kind of where, like, a downside is something like I actually think I've seen a few games that have a system like that where you can either thumb up a person or thumbs down them. And if you do that, they can actually lower a little bit. Or it can at least hurt them over a gradual amount of time. So, yeah, it's interesting. Cool new zombie game everyone keeps talking about. <laughs> no, Sinville. Uh, you talk about that piece of crap called The Day Before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean the game that they promoted to be an open world zombie survival game? That and an MMO as well. Be... Uh, yeah, an MMO open world survival zombie game where you can build bases and all sorts of stuff anywhere and form communities and whatnot. You gotta fight zombies and fight and loot and all that kind of stuff with an intuitive system that turned out to literally just be an extraction shooter where you fight a couple zombies, if any, at all. And it's not open world or MMO. It's just you go out on a raid, you come back, you might have a few things and stuff like that and things are just empty and boring and nothing to do. I yeah, sure. The basically a single player talk off game well it is multiplayer you can oh is it oh okay go. yeah it is multiplayer you can play with others but it's not an mmo it is not an mmo to be scammed turns out to be scammed shocker i know that i don't know i just had a bad feeling the fact that's like oh yeah no uh volunteer developers people that come in and do the work for free and a lot of their stuff looked pre-rendered I am not going to lie. A lot of that stuff that they put out did look pre-rendered to me, so I didn't have a lot of faith in it. I was using a... Is using an asset map? Mm. So it's an asset flip. Even worse. <laughs> well, that's what a lot... I remember a lot of people saying that. Well, here's the funny thing, too. Like, two days before they released the game... Did you guys hear that? Two days before they released the game, the developers put out a apology letter, which wasn't really an apology letter it was literally a letter it what it was so stupid it was like oh this is an apology letter but they weren't apologizing for anything they were asking people hey please don't you know it's like we're a new game that it's taken us five years to build this game that we've been trying so hard to make and everything so please be nice don't call us scammers don't call us an asset flip or anything we didn't do any of that <laughs> we delivered on what we wanted so don't do that so it wasn't, it was so stupid. It's like, oh, it's an apology letter. For what? Okay, what are they apologizing for? It wasn't an apology thing. They were asking people, please don't say any of this stuff to us. It's like, dude, seriously? <laughs> we'll try harder. Exactly. It's just, uh, I could have done better than that in five years, and I'd spend three learning how to code. Yeah, well, heck, even with how some... Like how engine, Unreal Engine 5 and stuff like that works now, half the time, you don't even need to code. You don't even know how to extensively code things anymore. Not with how some of the behavior blocking works and stuff like that. So, yeah. Instead of the barricades ahead of time. Exactly, Kuko. Exactly. I just... I don't know. And... Yeah. I honestly went into... The, it was a big streamer, so I figured I could say stuff and... Uh, not And probably get away with it. Hey, invite. Yep. I went into a guy's stream he was a big streamer there was probably like close to a couple hundred people in there so i knew my voice wasn't going to get heard so i was just throwing out random comments here and there saying oh hey is this the new uh is this the new division game heartlands that free to play one that you know it's an extraction shooter because that's what division heartlands is it's supposed to be an extraction shooter so i was going in there saying oh cool oh hey when did tarkov become third person and stuff like that i was saying all this kind of crap and whatnot and you got banned no, they didn't even see me. Nobody returned. Nobody responded to my messages or anything. So, Yay. honestly, the streamer, he was, he, it was funny. The streamer, he was trying to rush through the beginning of the game. He didn't pay attention to any of the dialogue because he wanted to keep it under the two-hour mark so he could get his refund just in case. So, he was trying to bum rush through the game to at least get into the meat of it to see what it's like. So, if he had to, he could return and get his 40 bucks back. Where some people were laughing at him. It's like, oh, dude, it's like, oh, you're not even trying to play the game right or anything. It's like, no, <laughs> he's being smart. The game's 40 bucks. Most likely is a complete trash bin of garbage of a game. 
So, yeah, if I was him and if I actually bought the game, I'd be doing the same thing. Trying to rush and get into the meat of the game, test it, and keep it under the two hours, and then return it. Oh, yeah, I would yeah. Have that, totally that's smart. That's smart. I would have done the exact same thing, but it's just the fact that mm, I already had a bad feeling about the game from the start, so I was not going to waste time, honestly. All right, well, let's uh, do it. Oh, uh, I'm, oh. I'm just checking the menu, see if we can actually get yep, anything. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Uh, okay, I have the best weapon available for me now. And USC. 45. Ooh. 300 damage, 350. Not bad. Uh, did you grab a starting skill yet? Uh, yeah, turret. Turret? Okay, copy that. I will go... I will play a little more support here then. Let me just swap up a few things really quick. <laughs> Wait, it's uh, okay. Pop up advice, etc. Don't make me talk to people for 40 minutes. Oh, no, exactly. Same here, Sinful. I wouldn't have listened to a game like that either with that much dialogue. Some people are speculating. I'm not saying, I'm not saying this. Just a lot of people are speculating and leaving comments and stuff like that on the game saying, oh yeah, no, really, they just tried to pack everything in the first couple hours of the game to make sure that you play the game past the return time, so you can't return it. There were people speculating on that, so... Electronic device detected. Oh wait, they're level 3 to 8. Alright, let me show you. Yeah, them. so, well, yeah, no, you can. So your level also got bumped up, so your damage and everything and everything pretty much should be a lot higher. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's 100k. So what that's what heck? happens when, so this game, that's what happens in this game when you play with higher ranking members. Okay. Uh, or teammates. Essentially, it's bumping you and all the enemies up to my level. So it means that essentially you are going to, for the time I'm here, you will deal more damage per shot and you can take more of a hit. That's basically the same damage that I was, I was doing. Just the numbers go up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it magically, it, it honestly is really good about that. It really balances it out to where you're dealing the damage you wouldn't normally do. Is this game worth getting, uh, how do you reckon? Always looking interest. This game? Scaling you so you can't go back and forth with friends in a good Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, we well, go. especially since that was a problem Whoa. in the first game. Oh. Yeah, the the first game had a problem with that because when you jumped into a game in the fir uh, when you played with other people higher ranking than you, it would only level up the enemies to your level. It would not carry teammates. So meaning, if we were playing the first game, at least when it first came out, if I was max level and Waz joined me, all the enemies would be level 30, Waz would still be level 2. He would get creamed. So thankfully in this game, they fixed that. They made it so, at least while we are playing, it's honestly a very good system. I, I'm pretty pleased with it. Wise is pretty much upgraded to my level, so is all the enemies. So that way, I can't cheese it easily. But at the same time... I don't uh, get any higher drops and just to have a lot yeah, of money. Exactly. Things that drop for you are still going to be at your level that you are at. You are still leveling up as we go, so it honestly works pretty good. Boom. Uh, so you can go back for I've heard an argument uh, concerning the. Uh, hey, level up. That the people who enjoy that game are part of the problem for reducing the standards of games and allowing games like that to succeed. Honestly, I agree. I 100% agree. A game like that should not be succeeding. That game, if I'm being completely honest, should crash and burn. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, if anything, or I would be fine if it succeeded if it was actually a good game. But it's not. It is 
especially for the dollar amount and everything. Now, if I was paying like five bucks or ten bucks for that, maybe, maybe I'd be okay with that. But the fact that they're trying to make it out where it's some sort of like a uh, revolutionizing game and stuff like that with all these great things in it, heck no, 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 not worth it. It's honestly, well, and that is probably, and that's okay. Unpopular opinion. Ooh, here with we go. How gaming, the gaming industry is nowadays. Ha I honestly believe half of the problem are the developers. The other half of the problem are players. Players do play a heavy part in this. When it comes to stuff like the monetization and games and whatnot, is that you have all these different things that go on. People buy into it, and the people that buy into it make the developers see, oh, hey, we can get away with making a half-cooked game and just put in a bunch of microtransactions, and we're good. No, base example is the latest cards. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. It's because people aren't looking to get anything better. They aren't... People are lowering their standards for especially AAA games. Now, an indie game, I'd be willing to be a little more lax on because they're indies. So... But at the same time, it's just very in. Eh. Yeah, no, look at this game. It plays a lot better, a lot smoother, and it, I mean, it has... This game, I'll put it... Oh, okay, here's a good way to put it. This game, Division 2, it's got a multiplayer mode, which is literally the days before. Which is Dark Zone. Extraction Shooter. Literally the exact same concept. And it's a bonus mode inside of a campaign and everything else. So, and of course that includes acceptance of monetization system thoughts. Yeah, no, agreed, agreed. Games that have heavy monetization systems and everything, if it's purely cosmetic, then I'm okay with that. That's okay for both sides of the road, or alley, or river, however you want to say it. The player and the devs. The devs can make a little more money, the players can have something that looks a little cool. But if it is anything that gives a player an advantage, which can be a skin. We've seen a problem like this actually with, uh, what was it? Um, I think I heard about a certain root skin, a crossover skin in the new COD that was practically see-through, but it was see-through. So it was actually, if you hid in brush, it was very easy. I keep this guy suppressed if you jump over and shoot him. No, I just basically executed him. Oof. Miss a mode from Division 1 where you extract. Wait, isn't that Dark Zone? I thought Dark I thought Dark Zone is and this one's the same way, where it's the extraction shooter. You go into the Dark Zone, you find yourself some loot, you gotta get out before you Okay. Honestly, I I might try the Dark Zone at some point here. Because again, it's just an extraction shooter game mode. You got plenty of others too. Uh, quit on a skin or the proper press. Yeah. I'll just buy those division hunters. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, going far left. Uh, to answer your question, um, Sinful, I would recommend getting this game. I would. 100%. Hours of fun. If you enjoy looter shooter RP, if you want a live service. RPG looter shooter like Division and such because actually some people have compared this to being a good looter shooter and live service game comparable to De uh, Destiny uh, yeah I would go for it especially the game goes on sale like, hey, it's on sale right now you... it's on sale right it's now on, it is on sale right I, I think it's, it's on sale right now 8.5 like the base game's like 8 money? bucks yeah 8.5 money yeah. so yeah it, it's cheap so, dude, if you're looking for a game like this, co-op, campaign-driven, looter shooter, RPG, open world, with other game modes, such as PvP game modes, extraction shooter game modes, a uh, roguelike game mode, and all sorts of stuff. Mm hmm The day before, 5,700 and something in-game, the Division, that many. Well, just wait. I mean, the Division is four years old. And there's still that many people playing it. The day before, it's only a couple days uh, new, and you're going to have a few people playing it for now. It's probably going to die over time. Which, again, no hate, just seriously. A game like that should not be doing good. It needs to go down. 
Oh, it's gonna die in like a week. Well, now here's the thing. That number, that 5,000 something number, it's only that high because right now it's the hype. But yeah, it, it just released as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just released. It's the new game. It's a new game that people have been waiting for. It's a hype. Some people are gonna try to keep it live. Obviously, we've seen that before. That hype is gonna die. In which case, that 5,000 plus is going to drop down to a mere 100. Most likely. Give it time. It could be weeks, it could be months. I'm not going to say exactly how long it's going to take because every game's different in that regard. But it's going to die. That attention is going to go down. It ain't even more Mitch Twitch views than Sturgeon for about, I don't know, an hour. That new Avatar game is losing publicity uh, to it, though. Yeah, exactly. That's losing. <laughs> I'll put it this way. Uh, Sinful, uh, get the finals. If you haven't gotten the finals yet, get the finals. A lot of us in the Adventures Guild is picking are picking that game up. It's free. It's a fun PvP game, just for some good old classic shooting stuff like that. Because you, you actually have some old timey devs making the finals. Pick it up, dude. We're gonna be playing it. We've got people playing it. Avatar is just uh, a reskin for Cryfart. I honestly haven't looked up anything about it, so I have no idea. Well, Far, Far Cry is not that bad. No, Far Cry I mean, is good. Six, I, six just, was I think they're just eh, saying, but it? uh, yeah. it's not bad. Yeah, I haven't even I haven't looked up anything. I'm playing the finals, man. It's a sick game. Are you playing the finals, dude? I'm gonna download it today, and I'm gonna start trying to play it with some of the community members. I know Wise and DJ have been playing it a lot. So, I mean, heck, it's free to play. It's probably you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot more hours of enjoyment out of it than uh, the days before. So. Gonna grab some loot. I can see it, uh, but it tries some new things. Fans will like it. It is super good, but solo plays and Oh, understandably, that's def uh, the finals is definitely a game you want to play with friends or community members. So that's why there's several people in the community that are picking it up. That way, there's hopefully at least enough people to uh, grab a team with. The finals. What's that? It's a free-to-play first-person 3v3, uh, probably a few other modes too, but uh, 3v3 um, chaos destruction game. So think like a bunch of the other type of ones out there. Just a simple team deathmatch kind of a thing with a few twists, but it, it's like an arena combat game. So you're in like a computer-generated arena, different operators and stuff like that, and everything's destructible. So yeah. Yeah, it's made by, exactly, just like Sinful said, it's made by XEA Dice Devs. So, oh, that's why it's indestructible. This is bad feel. Yeah, that's why it's indestructible, and that's why it's honestly a good game. It's made by people who left the companies and have decided to make their own little indie game. And it's it's good. It doesn't have, I think it's got some supporter packs where you can get some cosmetic stuff, but they did good to where there's no pay to win or anything. It's free to play. So yeah, worth downloading? Dude, download it. I'm getting it. Sin has it. We got a couple of people in the guild already that have been downloading. They've been on the beta tests. So uh, yeah, recommend it. Highly recommend it. Pick it up tier. Let's play together, man. Oh, hold up. Because um... the games are fast paced and fun. So I'm downloading it just to, I mean, occasionally every night, jump on, have a couple of people to play with and have some fun. So yeah. Sorry, why, uh, why is I'm talking over you? No, 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 it's not that. Uh, I'm telling hold up because I'm just sorting inventory. Through the inventory. Mm. Oh. So I'm getting all okay. this new stuff. Don't, uh, don't want to do it again, but guess what country made it? No way, made by Sweden? Dude, we should just play every game may ever made in Sweden. They know what's up. <laughs> No freaking way. Seriously, the guys moved to Sweden. And honestly, Sweden's becoming the better place right now to find good games. I mean, dang. Or at least anything that's not a AAA or not in the U.S. Well, okay. I mean, technically, there are some games out there that are pretty cheap. Uh, there's a couple. Yeah, there's a few games out there that I have the question. Oh, no respawns on. Okay. Yeah, no respawns. So, meaning boss fight. Nice. 
Destructible armor. Okay. Right, so that's explaining the different health bar and all that kind of stuff. You have health and then you have armor. But no, get this game compared to the day before. It's cheaper. You get way more gameplay out of it. Better soundtrack, better gameplay, a lot more fun. There's a clan system. There's actually a VoIP system. Funny thing, Days Before does not have a VoIP system. So, you know, kind of an oversight for a game like that. You'd normally have something like that if you're going to bump into other people and fight them. But me, play a lot of beta. Hey, it's nice. Makes sense. I didn't know EA is Swedish. Apparently that is. Whoa, whoa, hold on. EA is Swedish? No, no way. Wait, seriously? I, I, wait, I thought they had a, I thought they had a branch in Sweden, but I thought the main company was in like Seattle or something. Wait, seriously? Okay, I actually did not know that, or maybe I did. I just never actually paid attention. No way, right, he big, is No way. Big guy, big guy. Never mind, Dice. Oh, Dice is Sweden. Oh, there we go. Okay. Saint is dead. Easy. So close to greatness. Level up. We're... Saved. Yeah, no, exactly. We're saved. Okay. We're so close. Yeah, no, we're uh, exactly Kuko. It's like so close. Sweden was about to become like, you know, the best country to get a game from. If the devs are from there, get the game. <laughs> Who are you? What's going on? She's in shock. I'll bring her down when she's fifteen. Let's meet her. Imagine later. playing every EA game. Dang, that's a that'd be a lot. EA's got a very, very, d despite what you think of the games, just think about how many games EA has been making. Well, no, hold well, on. Well, same with Ubisoft and phew, a lot, oh, yeah, of, a lot of devs. Them. Oh, yeah. But now here's another thing to consider. You got to keep in mind, are we counting games that they've developed or published? Because, again, not every single time. EA is one of those. Yes, I do. I will confirm that EA is one of those publishers that kind of push uh, when they make a game. But, again, still sometimes they might publish a game here and there that they don't always have their fingers in, so to speak. But yeah, sadly, all these bigger guys, whenever they have, um, yeah, sadly, these bigger guys, EA, Ubisoft, all of them and whatnot. Yeah. EA is honestly probably the worst one. Um, Ubisoft, they're still okay. Eh, I feel eh, like they, mm, eh. it's iffy. I feel like they still pull through okay with like some of their games, like Far Cry and whatnot. But... It depends on which studio is it, because Ubisoft is a little bit different because Ubisoft has dozens upon dozens of different studios throughout the world. So some of those studios, when they make a game, it's good. Other ones, oh shoot, like what is it, Ubisoft Paris? I'm sorry, Ubisoft Paris, eh. but Massive Entertainment, good. So yeah. It depends on the Ubisoft one, so, but they do have their own gems. They do. Ooh, I found the double battle shotgun. Oh, oh nice. A green one as well. Oh, if they didn't have a launcher. Yeah, I could understand that. Mm -hmm. With the launcher, I only had problems with the Hero 6 way back. Oh. And sometimes it just doesn't connect because the servers are down, but usually it's yeah. not bad. For me yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah I, I've never had any problems either, unless we're playing Uno. The, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Boy. But no, that's kind of the thing, is because you got different... Um, I'm playing a cutscene, by the way. I'm gonna... Ouch. The hyenas are shooting civilians. Uh, 
Oh no, they're gonna execute him. Ow. Yeah, we good. We good. Uh, we good. Good. Awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. What's this new shotgun? Uh, I'm gonna love. Oh, ho, ho, ho. We basically all know double GTA damage. Six is gonna launch on when it comes out. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna. Yeah, GTA when it's on PC, it's gonna be. It already. They already do that. It's gonna first launch on their launcher in twenty, twenty five, uh, and everything. Gotta say, though, I like the idea of them doing, like, the Miami theme and whatnot, and them having those two new characters. So, it'll be interesting. So, well, definitely not going to play it. PC be launch is, uh, uh, I think, a year ahead of the console launch. So, that's not going to be good. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, because it's only releasing on PS5 and the Xbox Series, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm not a GTA player. It's not the fact that they're bad games, it's just I don't like the aesthetics. So, or at least I just don't really care enough. So, double dipping for any launchers. Well... Yeah, it's, they're, they're gonna double dip. I think they double dipped with GTA V as well. Oh yeah, no, a lot of them definitely do. I mean, Red Dead is too, you can buy it on multiple platforms now. But... No, no, no uh, by double dip, he means like, release on consoles and then release on PC sometime later. Oh, yeah, most likely. Mm -hmm. the same. Yeah, they were the same. I think a couple other games are like that as well. There, there are several. Well, yeah. you can see at the PlayStation games. Like, uh, Horizon released a couple years later. The Forbidden West is going to release next year. And it's been out for a year or something on PlayStation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they can't what actually say it's, a, it's hard to port. It's the same system. Consoles are just PCs, anyway. Well, yeah, it's just different, but yeah, no, exactly. So, oh. I'm assuming really, since GTA Five was kept alive on PC, by PC, kept alive, dude. That game was never gonna die. That thing's been going strong for a decade. It's gonna die two seconds after PC release. Yeah, 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 probably. From Hazlight Studios, which one's Hazlight Studios? I don't remember that name. Still huge. Oh yeah, no, role play will stay, but the main campaign all that, yeah. Our cards go burp. <laughs> PvP? Ooh. Well, ah, yeah, well, ah. no, that's just the thing. Everything's a little bit different. Well, no, here's the thing. Well, considering the fact that Steam takes a 30% cut uh, of any game sold on their system, understandably, if you're a big enough company and you can make your own launcher, no, not saying that I agree with the idea, but I can understand Rockstar's and Ubisoft's and EA's points of views. And Epic's. Because... Uh, and Epic. Yeah, I can... Well, yeah, because Epic was a game dev. They are a game dev. And then they made their own... So it's understandable that I can see their point of view where it's like, instead of just making these massive games and everything and then, you know, putting it on another platform to be sold, and every, a digital platform to be sold, then why not just make our when they can literally can it's not too hard to they can just make their own launcher and their own store and everything similar to steam and just put the all of their stuff on there technically at a money standpoint i can understand it now is it greedy and stuff like that yes absolutely 100 percent. but at the same time i mean if you have the capability to do something like that then why not I am exactly. Help. I mean, just not the way you want me to. I mean, that way they can at least keep more money to themselves. And I understand how some people are all about, yeah, them being greedy. But at the same time, think about it. That greed is also what's helping them provide more games. The sad part about that is that they are just staying on the greedy side. Now, obviously, if you find a studio, a, de a developer, or anything that you want to support, and they can make some good money, and they can keep making good games, then hopefully they would. Most of the time, that just doesn't happen, sadly. So, yeah. I actually think when the GTA 6 PC release is going to come, it's going to be on Rockstar Launcher first for, like, another three months or something. 
Oh, definitely. Oh, absolutely. That's what Kuko was just saying, that when GTA 6 drops in 2025, um, as long as they keep to their promise on when they're going to drop it. Um, yeah. I don't know. Rockstar Games... Hold on. I can't... I don't know. Is Rockstar... Are they pretty notorious about pushing games back? I, I honestly don't. Wait, how am I, I stuck? What do you mean, game? I'm stuck. Huh? Oh, oh, never mind. Never mind. Oh, there you go. It Takes Two is a phenomenal game. Yeah, It Takes Two? Phenomenal! EA! The rare gem of EA. It's pretty uh, rare. It, not often you get a good game from EA. Well, well, and that's the thing. EA was the publisher. They weren't the developer. They were just the publisher. So again... So it doesn't count, though. Where... Doesn't count. Well, no... Well, now here's what, well, you got to be careful with that kind of stuff because. Well, I mean, yeah, you got the backing, the money backing, but if you take yeah. the dev and give it like Valve publishes the game, it's the same game. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Well, and that's just the kind of thing you got to be careful with is that when you say that it's a game from someone, you got to be cautious because everything's different. The way that the publishing between a dev and a publisher works is different between every single game and every single dev and publisher because every single game is developed underneath a different contract the developer approaches the publisher saying hey if you help publish our game you fund it and everything then you sell it you help market you know get it out there and whatnot we make the game you get out there now those contracts can change some de sometimes the contract can state that the publisher can have a very strong emphasis on how the game is developed. They can they oh, can yeah, control yeah, yeah, how the yeah, game yeah. is made. But sometimes, if the developers are smart enough and negotiate the terms, they can negotiate the terms where the publisher can't control how the game is made. So that's where you really have to take every single game that is developed between a publisher and a developer, especially if it's some big company who's the publisher, really look into it because it can depend on a lot of stuff. It can't just be an instant, oh yeah, the game's, you know, being published or, you know, it's being developed by these guys uh, or whatever, it's being published by these guys. They're like, oh, well, if it's being published by these guys, then it must be an awful game. It's like, well, be careful because if you can, find out what the contract was if it's public. Look it up if you can. Look up whatever that contract was negotiated between the developer and the publisher. It's the exact same thing with books and even movies. Yes. What? What do you want? You gotta tell me, buddy. You can't just sit there and point at things. But no, it's the exact same thing with book publishing. You have a. Uh, oh, writer shoot. We're in the crossfire. Go. Oh, yep, crossfire. Carefully. Same thing with books. I, I have a friend who writes books. I also have another friend who actually was a publisher. Oh, dude, we are really in a crossfire here. And grenade. Digga, 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 digga. I'm backing up. Excuse me, we're trying to have a conversation here. My kid needs my attention. But it's the exact same thing with book publishing. You have your writers, aka developers. They're the guys that originally make it. You have your editors slash publishers. Editors are kind of like a third party who just help make sure it looks good. But then you have your publishers, where a writer takes it to the publisher, they work out a contract. It is exclusive between them, it is different every single time. Essentially, the publisher will help print and make the book and get it out there. They'll help distribute it to the world. They'll do all of that stuff. They even help maybe they fund the production of the books and whatnot. And then they just negotiate a price to get a certain amount back. But the thing is, it could be different. It could be like the, the, the contract can be, hey, you know, we will be your publisher for this book until, and essentially it is considered said and done when we make back the amount of money that we put into it and a interest amount. Typically around maybe something like 7 to 10%. That's how it typically goes. And then you keep the rest. Basically. And then you keep, exactly, then you keep the rest as the writer. Literally the exact same deal between game devs and publishers. Literally the exact same stuff. That is exactly how it works. Like, literally, if I want to develop a game, I could go to EA, Ubisoft, or anything and say, hey, here's an idea. 
I got a studio that will develop it. You guys just help publish it. And then we can, you literally negotiate every fine piece of information on that. You can say, hey, they, typically they will try to negotiate and say, hey, we'll give you a larger sum of money to help this game out, but we get to have a say in how it's developed. That's where you get into the point of where some developer or people will say stuff like that. But sometimes they're, they're, uh, uh, here's an example, uh, Focus, uh, is it Focus Entertainment? Yes. Yeah, Focus Entertainment. They are a phenomenal publisher because very rarely do they actually get heavily involved into the development of the games. They will publish the game. They are a phenomenal publisher. They do great by that. They are norm normally a very good publisher to work with. They will help fund your game and everything. You might not get a lot, but you might at least get a favorable amount so you can develop your game. And then they will help publish it. And then they will just want to, if they have a contract and everything worked out, or they get their share back plus a little bit of interest, and that's it. And there you go. Or maybe they will have no interest, but they just want to get a little bit back from every single sale that ever is made, ever. So it is pure, it is very different so just an fyi out there that's how it works and i forget that sometimes but i try my best to make sure that whenever i look at a game that has a developer and a publisher and everything to try to look into what that contract is if you can find anything out about it at all because that kind of helps you to also even technically kind of helps you give a better insight of what the game's going to be like if you find a game, it's like, oh, this looks like a cool idea. Who's the developer? Some small indie developer. Cool. Who's the publisher? Eh, I'm not sure about these developers. They're a big company, but uh, they they might try to wreck a game. You try to find out what their contract is. Is it actually a big contract where the dev the publisher can manipulate the game development or not? In which case, that's going to tell you how the game's going to be. If they're going to get their you know meaty paws on it and wreck the game and everything because they want to try to push it out and get it out soon and stuff like that so take look at everything that way it honestly changes a really big perspective it's very interesting i gotta say taking us to school i'm not sorry i'm getting passionate about this and i'm getting heated <laughs> well not heated i'm just getting very talkative for some reason you guys get me on <coughs> I know this happens. yeah blame chat yes always works i'm gonna blame you <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but, but money grub exactly money grub exactly it, but that's just where it's just important to look at all of it differently that way the exact same thing with books technically even movies are similar to that where you might I mean, they're a little bit different but the way that movies especially in hollywood are developed very similar you got different studios and everything that provide different services and stuff like that for making the production and so on and so forth so yeah oh my goodness so you, uh, hey Bryce, how's it going, buddy? Can we get a shout out for Bryce really quick while I go check on the kiddo? Just a real quick shout out. How are you doing, Bryce? Welcome, in. good buddy. Uh, we're good. We're talking about uh, development and publishment, uh, publishing. Uh, essentially, yeah, uh, all the stuff uh, that you got with games and books and such. And you got a surprise for me when I visit again. Ooh, what might that be? If you guys haven't checked out Bryce yet, please do so. He's phenomenal. He's a great streamer. He's just getting into it. Go check him out. I'm great, beautiful. How are you? I miss you, friend. <laughs> Be back soon. Sounds good. I gotta go check on the kid, then we're gonna just get back, and we'll be done with the publishing thing. Uh, <laughs> so, I, oh, every I, time you show up in chat, dang that. I'll be right back as well. I'll grab a drink. Boom.
So yeah. No, I I had a really good friend from years ago. I I don't talk to him. Anymore. But um, no, he was a uh, he was a book pu uh, publisher. He was literally a book publisher. So his business was uh, he was actually let me correct that he was an ebook publisher. So he would essentially help uh, fund things about like getting up on the website. He would help people get their books into the e uh, as an ebook and get it published uh, on the internet and all sorts of places and whatnot. So he handled all of that for people. Um, so, yeah, it was interesting, but uh, I learned all that from him. Internet is popping in and out, might have missed something. No, it's all good, buddy. Just saying, hope you're doing well, Bryce, and, uh, you say you got something for me next to my visit? Okay. Okay. I'm curious. Very curious. Dude, the ad on your stream is so bright. Why? Wait. Why? Why? What? I'm I'm in your ads right now and it's oh, no. so bright. Why is it so bright? I have no idea. Eh. Eh. Okay, I'm good. Let's go. We're good. Okay. Yep. Okay. Enough about the publishing. You guys have my two cents on the matter. Let's keep going. At this point, I'd just be repeating myself. So next, honestly, guys, should I make like just a? I feel like I should make a command or something like that on my stream where it's just a. Uh, Instead of the mute thing, I, I feel like I should do something similar to mods. Okay, mods. Um, I'm going to have... Okay, uh, Yin, what do you think about this idea? Should I just make a simple command? And we'll just start off with something simple. We'll make it so, Yin, you can just say, like, uh, like stop talking or something like that. Uh, whatever, like, a simple one-word command is. And it will literally just make my bot tell me to shut up. Or if I'm talking too much. I feel like I should do that. I know I talk too much sometimes. And I get really into some subjects. So I, sh I need to make something. A command. That my mods can use. To make to tell me when I should just shut up. In a nice way. That way my, the bot can be the one to say it. That's totally not going to be exploited. <laughs> you know I talk too much. <laughs> uh, uh, talking and talking. I know, but I, I need... Kuko, you need to show up during my talking streams, not when I'm trying to play with friends. Because then I take a, it takes away from the time with friends, and I talk too much. And it don't make it fun. Why would we want to stop? I, 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 I know some people are just here for the game, and I also know I'm probably taken away from Wise's stream too, so yeah, I feel bad. <laughs> You should do more podcasts so you can get things off your chest. I should, but uh, I, I don't write these things down. I, 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 I need to write these things down. Well, plus, it's a lot more of a genuine thought process and talk when it's live. So... A live podcast, You dude. know... Well, you, honestly, I should. That's not a bad idea. I, I've actually been talking about getting Wolfie. Uh, about trying to do some podcasts with her. Oop, heads up. To be fair, we are here for the chattiness. I I know, I know. Th that's the reason you guys are here, is because you, you guys enjoy my chattiness for some reason. But yeah, I'm going to talk to Wolfie and stuff like that. I want to do podcasts with her because I feel like we got a lot of stuff that we can... We have a lot of similar viewpoints and chit chat and stuff like that, but at the same time, could talk about different things. And speak of the devil, Wolfie. Hi. Nice. <laughs> speak of the. Hi. How much did you just hear? <laughs> Live podcasting with guests like. Uh... Hi. <laughs> wow. Okay. Were your ears burning? I mean, what the heck? You play games? <laughs> I know I play games. I'm currently running a status effect build. Uh, is what I'm currently running. Hi, Wolfie. How are you feeling? Okay. Hey, you want to do a podcast together? Let's just start doing live podcasts together where we just sit back and chit chat. And just chat people's ears off. For five hours. On... For five hours. Literally, I feel like with me and Wolfie, we could. That's the thing. I feel like with Wolfie, we could totally do that. 
feeling better, like 90% better. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. We could, though. We could? I, I, exactly. Right? Whoopee. Right? We totally could. That's another reason, is because I feel like between Wolfie and I, I don't know, it's just the conversations we have, everything just clicks. And I don't know, we both of us bring a lot of interesting things to the table. So, Wolfie, podcast. What's the schedule? We gotta work on a schedule. All right, we'll keep to it. Podcast right Thursday now. Night, Thursday night? Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Podcast gimme. right now. <laughs> no, podcast, uh, literally anything. We'll just, we can easily find topics or even it'll just be a podcast. We'll title it once we're done. We'll just let people come in and bring up a conversation and hear our th thoughts on it. We don't even have to come up with a script or anything or title it. It's just, uh, it's us, you know, we'll come up with a title. We don't need to name the episodes until after the fact. And yeah. Well, just basically shooting the, uh, <clears throat> <laughs> hey, level up. One's in chat for podcast right now. <laughs> right now. I want to make sure Wolfie's feeling at 100%. I don't want to put too much on her plate all of a sudden. But no, this way we don't have to come up with a script. We don't have to always think about what we have to talk about every single time. It's just a, hey, let's just jump on and talk between the two of us. Not going to lie, I am positive we can find something to talk about. So... And we can throw little random games on in the background, like uh, like Risk of Rain 2 and stuff like that. Simple games throw on the background so you guys at least see something. So, well, not going to lie. We have the whole... Um, Twitch has the whole stream together thing, so it makes it a lot easier to do uh, collab work with other people now. I've been trying to look into it more. So, because I've got a collab coming up with uh, Marshmallow. Thing. So... I gotta look into that. I would say yes to right now, but I kind of feel like gaming, eh, so probably gonna do that. No, please do. Well, in that case, heck, why don't we? And actually, I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, Wise has me for a couple hours here, so we're gonna play this and have some fun. And then most likely, I'm going to be doing some uh, Ghost of Tabar tonight. So yeah. No, honestly, it's fine throwing a game in the background. We just gotta start playing some more games together, Wolfie, so we can do podcasts at the same time. Yeah, some easy games. Make... Like, you don't even, yeah. don't actually think. Yeah, you know, simple games you have in the background that you don't have to, like, overly think about, per se. Or games that we're really good at enough where we don't have to think about it. So. Alright, well, in that case, Wolfie, we gotta think about time. Audacity. Uh, you schedule uh, full and you can't uh, play with me tonight? Well, no. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. We should name our podcast Audacity. Oh, yes. no. That's the name of the podcast, Audacity. <laughs> we got to throw another word in there. Audacity of something, something. That's the name of the podcast, just Audacity. Trade market or right now. Or just the Audacity. That is... You have to cooking. trademark. We're cooking, folks. You have to trademark. Mm -hmm. Trademark it, the audacity. Welcome to the audacity with Wolfie. <laughs> oh my goodness. That would be amazing. Let's do it. The audacity. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, Wolfie. Well, how. Uh, I, could, I could work on it. Of you not to join in and chat with Wolfie. The audacity. Yep, no, that... Mm -hmm. The audacity of when you don't come in here and talk to us. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'd even say, like, just, heck, Wolfie go, like, play or stream her thing, I do my thing, we just jump in a call and just chit-chat about whatever. Because why not? Oh, wow, I have to stand this close? Okay. Yep. Here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, Wolfie, in that case, uh, Wednesday night. Let's see, you're two hours behind, uh, ahead of me. Uh, Wednesday night. Mm. Back from Matt. Oh, okay. No, I was just saying. Uh, no, I was just saying. Yeah, we'll name it Audacity and all that kind of fun jazz. Uh, Wednesday night. How's that sound? Uh, 7 o'clock my time, 9 o'clock your time. For two to three hours or five, depending. And we can pick a game to have in the background, or no game to have in the background. 
we can either both stream, or if you want, we can do a stream together thing. We got options. But how's Wednesday sound? But yeah, Bryce, currently I'm running the, uh, I'm running, um, a status effect build. So, more damage I deal, I start, or as long as I, enemies I hit, uh, hold on, I gotta look at this, uh, how that's set up again. Uh, how does this work? I think they catch on fire. Uh, not quite, actually. So the way mine works is that, uh, shooting a status effect enemy will mark them. If I kill a marked enemy... Uh, I get a full clip of hollow point ammo, which deals extra damage. And I believe you also get a clip as well. That's why I'm not running out of ammo. Yeah, you'll get a full clip of it. Uh, it also ampli- so hollow point amplifies damage by 20% and applies bleed. And if you- so technically by dealing that status effect and then killing the person with that status effect, it loops on itself. It sacks. Oh, stop shining the light on me. What, a, Should what the heck? I am unsure of me streaming. I gotta look at OBS and also kind of just sort out all that. It's a bit since I stream, but uh, we can talk for sure. No, mm -hmm. well, even if you want to stream, if you don't want to, or if we do like a stream together where like we can set it up where you're. Uh, uh, avatar and everything could even appear on my stream kind of stuff or whatnot or you set it up with a camera feed and whatnot honestly yeah no we tell them. oh no i know i know i know i know i know i was just getting distracted thank you very much for the gifted sub to wolfie so now she can enjoy this not so premium content but free of ads thank you it is appreciated i know wolfie does too wait that's it Okay. Nah, I got a... RC. No, 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 I mean, uh, we killed them all. No, there's one more. Right there. Look out! Oh. She's hiding up top here. Oh. Okay. There we go. Good job. I'm definitely not set up to heal. Your content is always premium? I got exactly what you meant. Don't worry, I can't spell either. Derp. I'm always reckless. Yes. See? Here's me being reckless. Haha. <laughs> Blowing up chemicals in a weird lab and everything that I don't know if I should be breathing or not. And me just running in. In the middle. Damn, it's good. I'll be over here. I'm loading lead. Oh, shh. Big guy, big guy, big guy, big guy, big guy. Oh, yeah, back up, back up. Careful. Yeah, that's one thing. This game operates a lot in, you go into an area, you pick a corner, and you kill everything as they spawn from all over. Swear to God, at and I just want to play my game and watch my streams, please. <laughs> uh, Wolfie, what you gonna play today? Also, Wolf, oh, Wolfie. Wolfie, whoa, whoa, ooh, 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 ooh. Wednesday, and we play Bakura. Thinking green hell. Hey, there you go. Also, Wolfie. So, yeah, uh, Bakura or whatever the name is. Mm, do that Wednesday as we play or as we talk or. Ow! Oh, you're dying. Cool. Owie. There you go. Uh, or we can save it for another uh, weekend or something like that, too, where we have more time. And also, Wolfie, speaking of green hell, you've met Marsh, right? Marshmallowfin? He's a pretty big streamer and stuff like that. A lot of fun. I'm pretty sure I've introduced you. About a podcast over it because it's story driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to be too ambitious. Now, nah, we need more things to do together. So we'll play that uh, next week or something like that. And uh, we'll do a uh, podcast together about time. So. But. Uh -oh. um, Ow. Talking about Marsh. I got him green hell. 
and he wants to do a collab with me at some point. Is a big streamer. I would consider Marsh to be a big streamer. He's pretty stinking cool. He deserves to be big. That guy's dope. He's awesome. I know he's only like a couple thousand, but still, he's cool. I thought he was the guy that couldn't read. Well, maybe that too. I can't read. Who can read? But you? anyway, I got Marsh, uh, hell or Green Hell. I uh, him and I have been discussing the idea of doing a collab stream. Playing Green Hell together. Would you be interested? Doing another playthrough with like three, maybe four of us. And it could even potentially be like a big collab stream between like four different. Maybe that's the thing that I'm still trying to wonder. I'm honestly thinking. I'm honestly not sure if I will stream it. I'm thinking that I'm just going to. I'm hesitant if I'm going to stream. Uh, me playing with Marsh. I'm thinking it's just going to be more of a uh, we play on his thing, maybe do like a stream together thing, but not like uh, I'm going to stream my perspective, because it, it's really hard to um, especially knowing how chatty some people's chats can be it's very hard to keep up with that kind of stuff, so at, I feel like it just makes it easier to say, hey I am going to be in this person's stream, go over there and talk with us kind of a thing, which I honestly feel like I might do. I might just put an announcement out on the guild and just say, hey, I'm going, like, it's going to be his playthrough. Is he pretty, well, that's, a, does he play with others often? Bryce, because I honestly have never really seen him play with other people too often when they're also streaming. I, I've seen it like once or twice. It's because the more people that are streaming, the more chaos it can be in, ch in challenge. Yeah. Or we about no, 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 no. I'm I'm saying more along the lines of like I'm typically pretty good about muting myself when I'm playing with other streamers sometimes, and we're worried about talking over each other. So yeah. And I know for a game like Green Hell or this and stuff like that, it's pretty easy to not get... Uh, you can kind of talk over each other. I've been trying to get better about muting myself uh, whenever I have to. Um, Dead. But no, I'm more saying, like, if we had, like, three or four streamers all in a chat together talking, and each of us probably would easily have close to... 15 if not many more each talking so we're trying to talk with our chats and we're also trying to talk to each other so i don't know i feel like with green hell it's slow enough we could maybe get away with it just get good about muting yourself if it's something direct i don't know well you can always, always uh, thought... press the talk to your chat that's also true that's also true turning on a pu uh, push to talk while we are playing together mm -hmm. if that's a concern because I'm not going to lie, I've also thought about trying to get, whoop, that's someone we want, about getting Paw in as well. So it would be Marsh, Iron, Wolfie, and Paw all playing Green Hell together. So, yeah. Playing with someone else, uh, but is, uh, he's good at managing chat and game. Yeah, well, no, um, that's the thing. Uh, when you're collabing, though, you got chat, game, as well as other people you're trying to talk to. So, it depends doing push-ups while trying to survive I would die oh yeah that'd make things interesting <laughs> you're being chased by a jaguar and then all of a sudden <laughs> push-ups Ooh, yeah and the jaguar well, kinda... joins you in push-ups yeah yeah <laughs> yeah exactly I don't know, I just kind of feel like at that point depending on the streamers and the the game and everything sometimes it might just be better where like everyone congregates to one person's channel and then because i'm being honest i feel like just wolfie and i alone can make a lot of things entertaining happen in that game while playing with marsh so <laughs> i don't know it would be interesting but yeah it's i'm not saying that it would be like a hard thing i just know that in the past playing with many different people all streaming at the same time 
while they're all trying to focus on the game, talking with the other people, and also chatting with their chats, especially if they're chatty people. Uh, understandably, if the, if it was like a bunch of streamers that were not chatty at all with their chat, then it probably wouldn't be an issue. But considering all four of us are pretty dang chatty with our chats, so okay with me joining uh, their world, I am down. So would we still be playing our? Yeah, we would still be doing our playthrough. Oh, absolutely, Wolfie, absolutely. No, you and I would still definitely be doing our playthrough. That's what I kind of feel like. You have your playthrough. I have like my playthrough that you join me on. And then we would join Marsh's playthrough and everything. So we would just be on his. Oh, playthrough. Iron, Iron. What, what do you got? What do you got? Uh, I'm here at the demolition site, control point. You want oh, to take it right, down? Come on. Yeah, let's do it. You're the, you're the squad leader here, so I should be uh, following you. No, you're following chat. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> Do I have a stream playthrough of the game yet? Well, no, and that's... I, I'm just saying that you can have your stuff. Like, the one that you and I are together doing is mine and whatnot. And you've just been appearing as a guest on there, so... That's kind of where... Yeah. Level up. It's sort of... Copy that. Ah, watch the minigun at the front. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking. All right, go ahead and flank him. I'll try to keep up uh, the attention back here. I'm also going to call in some of our reinforcements. Not sure how it works, but Twitch has that host feature, right? They do, um, which works kind of interestingly, I actually will say. I'm, I haven't looked fully into the stream together or the guest feature is what it's called, uh, stream guest and uh, stream together. But from what I can understand, stream together, essentially the way that works is that you set up a web browser within your own stream. And okay, so there's stream together and guest. Stream together, you set up a web browser, uh, or web browser source in your stream as an overlay. Then what happens is that you generate a link and everything, you give it to the other streamer you're playing with. Now, that other streamer, they can choose to share their camera or their OBS feed. So, like, if they're playing a game or they have, like, any overlays they want to share, they can share all of that through that, um, uh, they can share all of that through that, uh, browser source. And then it appears on your stream just like if it was them streaming on their own. So meaning you can have like two or three people all on one channel providing their own feed and then you essentially combine it all on that one. Now, uh, but it also kind of adds like some extra unique stuff. Uh, there's two individuals that I've met uh, called Trigga and her husband, um, Odin, and they do stream together. They, uh, they always stream together. They stream similar games and everything. And what they do is they do the stream together feature and it's really cool because when you go to their channel, it actually does like a whole special promotional thing to show off the other streamer. So it's actually really cool. And you can have multiple streamers. It's not just a two party, it's a multiple. So, and then the guest feature works similarly to that. The way it works is, uh... okay, captured, very nice. Nice. Um, the way the guest feature works is pretty similar. You generate another uh, web source overlay and you put it on your stream. And then essentially that creates a second space where anybody with a Twitch account, you don't even, they don't even need to be a streamer. As long as you have a Twitch account, essentially you can generate a link and anybody, you can give that link to people. They can open that link and then essentially uh, whatever they open it on, either their phone, their computer, or whatever it may be, it allows them to share, again, either their camera or their game feed or whatever it may be to you. And then essentially it literally acts like a stage thing, like literally, like you're hosting a talk show. People can queue up to come on and talk. And then you can choose who you want to bring up and talk with. So you could do like a bunch of people with all their cameras on, just like if it was a Discord call but you don't have to capture Discord for it anymore. It's a very sleek design. So like a Zoom so call. Any, 
literally, yeah. It's literally Twitch's version of like a Zoom call, but you can also do everything. Well, I mean, everything like a Zoom, you know, camera, gameplay, anything like that. So if you have four people playing a couch party game, all with a different perspective, you can literally use that function and have all four perspectives on one person's stream. You can do that easily. But you know, like with Discord, where uh, like some people use Discord and you have like everyone's cameras up and then they stream the Discord call, you still see everything else on Discord. Sometimes people don't like that. This is literally just a blank web browser source. So it is, that is all you see is just the cameras. You can make it look really nice. So there's a lot more customization on making it look good if you want to. So, plus it can be a little more controlled and stuff like that too. There's a few other features built into it too. I don't know the extent of it. I haven't used it yet. So, yeah. Uh, get over the anxiety of it and stuff like that. No, that's understandable, Wolfie. No, that's and I'm not trying to pressure you into it. Just whenever you would like to do so. So I'm here and ready and willing to schedule in literally anything, talk shows, games, anything. So I am here and all ears. Even so, Uno. Even yep. Even Uno. Even Uno. <laughs> I'll just say that whenever we do a talk show, probably not a game that requires a lot of. Uh, quick thinking or anything like that so hey like uno chess. doesn't require quick thinking not at all uh it yeah, <laughs> yeah it depends on how you play most of the time it does <laughs> what's that question mark on the left uh, uh random activity hmm let's check or encounter that. Public, so, execution. public execution let's go stop that yeah let's go execute something no we're stopping the execution no no like no, no. we're executing okay we're executing the executors yes right Yes, yes, yes. And now we got more hostiles to deal with. First, I mean, I am fine joining in on your streams, just sharing my own. Uh, hard. No, that's all. That's all good. Nate. Well, here's the thing, Wolfie. If you're gonna play, ouch! If you're gonna play some Green Hill tonight, currently I am waiting to hear back on a confirmation if I am gonna be playing Ghost of the Bar tonight or not. I do not know. If I am, then I will probably have a busy night. But other than that, if it doesn't happen, then I'll be available to either do a talk show tonight or a podcast or whatever. And then I can play Green Hill, so. Or, yeah, goes to bar. If not Green Hill. If not Green Hill? Wait, what? Sorry? What? Sorry, did I mumble that again? I'm sorry. Uh, I mumbled that and probably messed it up. Me, I mean, I'm Ghost of Tabar. I'm only going to be online with Wise because I don't want to keep him up too late. Because this man needs his beauty sleep. I don't. Nah, you do. Nah, you gotta take care of that. So you gotta take care of the face, man. You gotta take care of the face. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. I mean, it as a compliment. So no, sorry. Okay. I can say hello, <laughs> but or as a compliment if you want. I can try it again. So, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> he must take care of that divine beauty that is amongst his face. Amongst? I don't Among think it's better. Among us. Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> You gotta fix my gotta beard, take care of that mug he's got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, alright. Make it sound a little better. <laughs> <laughs> but no, sorry, as I was saying, I'm gonna play with Maz for a bit until he's had his fill of me uh, and the game and everything. And then uh, tonight the wife will be home after dinner and all that. We'll have dinner, but then she's probably gonna take a bath, so I have an open evening. So, in which case, it could be something I might play some Ghost of Tabar. Because I've been meaning to, but at the same time, uh, I, I haven't heard a, con a confirmation on, yes, we're doing that yet. So, heck, if you want to schedule something else, I'm all good. So, either while you play your, I mean, heck, you could even just play your version, or, or your playthrough of Green Hell. We can send a call together and just chit-chat. So we could do that, too. Hey, Joe, welcome back. Uh, Lurk, wait, you coming back or, you, wait, uh, hi, Joe, how's it going? Okay, now what? Who are we gonna go pummel? 
I have no idea, actually. Okay. I'm just uh, searching through inventory. What can I sell and okay. what, what not? Sounds good. I got way too many guns. Ooh, a new rifle. Okay, that's good. That's good. And you. I'm just gonna go through and mark all the stuff really quick. Okay, no, 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 no. Wait, I picked up another one of these? If you would not like to, I would like to play Green Hell. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I would definitely like to. If if you want, play tonight and everything. I'm totally down. But I'm also saying if you'd like to play through your game tonight and just chit chat, we can do that. And then I can do something else on my uh, heck. I can just sit here and talk. So and we can play something else uh, and do the talk, or we can play Green Hell. It depends on your mood. My mood is anything right now. So what would you? Can be posted if you wanna, and I do not mind playing our green health. Okay, I. I do. I'm making this any easier. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All good. <clears throat> All right. We are good. We're good. All right. Let me just deconstruct all these uh, guns I got really quick, and then I will be good. Uh, I just sold them. Cause eh. Yeah, honestly, selling or deconstructing, either way. But most likely, the deconstruction won't be useful until you get like higher tier items, because then you can use those higher quality equipment or uh, pieces of stuff and to go on uh, from there. Right. Okay, Wolfie, I'll ask this, Wolfie. How long are you going to be on to? Because I know currently it's what uh, six thirty for you. How long will you be on? Because I will be going for probably only, I mean, how much more time you got? Why is I don't want to take you for uh, so like, what, another hour? An hour, an hour and a half, something. Okay, so yeah, we got plenty of time to keep going with that. So we'll keep going. At that point, essentially when my wife gets home with dinner is when I'll call it for this stream. Uh, and then, because I slept late stupidly. Oh, okay, okay. Well, no, that works. Um, let me have a look here. Oh, perks. Wait. Oh, no, wait. Perks, yes. Enhance your character. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Unlock, nice. If not, then yay, I'll still lurk and watch you uh, soon. Big deal. Okay, sounds good. In which case, yeah, we'll just find time. But. Oh, uh. <laughs> Heck, what do you guys say? Should Wolfie be like uh, my partner in crime when it comes to like streams? Because we were talking about like duo streamers and stuff like that a while ago. I don't know if he likes me enough to do that though, so I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Hi, buddy, what's up? Hang on. <laughs> Partner in crime. Exactly. Partner in crime. Hey, Jesus, how's it going, buddy? Welcome in. Hey, it's been a minute. How are you? So you said dinner's done and everything, so you're good and ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I'm just going to be playing with uh, Wise here for another hour and a half or so, roughly. Uh, it's his first playthrough, so I'm kind of hanging out with him. Uh, and everything so but uh, essentially the time that will be done is also the time my wife will be done so i'll probably take about an hour tonight to sit down cook dinner and stuff like that just gonna be pizza we're gonna sit down hang out for a bit and then i'll probably be back again uh maybe stream maybe not depend it also depends on if you'll have time jesus and also if you are if anything i don't know if i'll have the energy to play a lot of vr tonight i will be able to play a couple rounds 
You can't get um, past those defenses. Not at yet. least, if time still works. Once we reconnect to our uh, and tower, then, get the main shade node uh, at that point, um, or if not, then I mean, again, if you got everything working well, then technically we can schedule a time during the week. I do know I'm going to be uh, preoccupied next weekend uh, due to the fact that I'm beta testing Skull and Bones. So, yeah. Oh, talk about Skull and Bones more. Huh? What's that game? Skull, Skull and Bones? Oh, you don't know about it? Nope. Oh, uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You know what? Yeah. Probably the best the Assassin's side? Creed. Yep. Skull and Bones. They took the piracy and everything from Assassin's Creed Black Flags and they made it an entire, it's a whole own game. The whole, think Assassin's Creed Black Flag meets Sea of Thieves. Is it PC or mobile? Uh, PC as well as console. There's a closed beta that's coming uh, weekend from the 15th to the 18th. You can register either on their website or I have access and if I can get on early enough and start streaming soon enough, I'll have Twitch drops enabled so anyone that watches my stream for one hour will also get a game code. No, oh, I'm in. Beta. I'm in. It is a one to three player co-op. It's primarily co-op PvE, but there are some PvP elements. I'm not sure what elements exactly. They're still kind of hush-hush about it. They, I'm honestly kind of happy that they're not giving out too much about the game, so there's enough to explore. All I know is that the naval combat works very similar to how Assassin's Creed Black Plague worked. You have your ship that you can upgrade over time, and you have a crew that you have to take care of, and so on and so forth. And uh, same combat and all that kind of stuff as well. And then the way it works is that you... Um, and then essentially the way uh, you can uh, roam your ship, you can also go to islands and roam the islands as well. Do so, you get to plunder the islands though? Yeah, there, there's like plunder, there's map, there's a, like a treasure that you have to find and stuff like that, maps and so on and so forth. Ooh. Um, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure there's also like a sunken treasure that you can dive down and grab sometimes uh, at shallow, shallow locations, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But don't quote me on that. So, again, they're kind of hush-hush. I filled out several surveys for the game, and from what I've seen of some of the things on the questionnaire, it, it def they're doing very good, because if I'm being honest, they've sent me, like, five different questionnaires in the past year on how I would like a game like this to be. And they're like, would you like a PvP element? Would you like a more stronger PvE element? Would you like to play more friends solo? Would you like to have the options for all these things? But have it still kind of segregated in game modes or something like that? And they even like asked questions like how I felt about like other games. Like even other big AAA games that are coming out and stuff like that. So it's been interesting. So it's interesting. Um, I still don't know a whole lot about it, but yeah. Oh, well, I'll check it out, definitely. Because the yeah. naval combat was super good, that game. It was. It's As far as I can tell, it's going to be similar to the naval combat of that, of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. But then the co-op aspect is going to be similar to how um, uh, Sea of Thieves works. Where I think each t you can have like two teammates playing with you or something like that, or cooperatively. And I think your teammates uh, make up the other ships. So you're acting as a fleet together, I think. Oh, nice. Works, instead of on a similar crew. But again, you can get up and walk around your ship, fight other people that are trying to board your ship, and board your friend's ship and stuff like that. But you are the captain of your ship, essentially, I think is the way it works. But again, I've been trying to stay away from watching other people's stuff on it. I think the Rad Brad uh, was actually given some early game gameplay that he could share. I think uh, that was like at the beginning of the year, I think, or the middle of the year. So there's that kind of going on. I haven't watched it yet, so you. Yeah. That's cool. I'll check it, it out. Every... Definitely, definitely, I'll check it yeah. out. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, I I'm I'm being... outside. By the way. Oh, okay. sounds good. I'm just selling some stuff, and then I'll be good to go. Okay. Uh, something I was missing with the downloadable link. Hold on, is the Twitch drop a code for the beta? Yes, yes. The Twitch drop is, is so if people have their Twitch and their Ubisoft accounts linked, and if they watch my stream for an hour at least consecutively, then they will get a beta code that they can use. Now, if you're playing on PC, 
then I'm pretty sure it's going to just automatically recognize, oh, hey, this person watched the stream for this long, so you'll get the game in your library. Now, if you're, you can also get the code and use it on consoles, but the process is a little more detailed. I'm not entirely sure how it's supposed to work. I didn't look at that part. But technically, so yes, that means anyone who, I'm going to stream for three days. I plan to stream for three whole days as long as nothing interferes with that. So meaning, if you catch me on the first day, you can get the code, download the game, and play for two days, or technically three days straight. Because the beta goes until Monday. I'm only streaming until Sunday. So, yeah. Uh, the new X... I've been hearing some pretty good things about the new uh, Assassin's Creed VR game. Alright, get rid of that, get rid of that, and there's a couple pages. There's three pages of this. Okay, good, let's go. I'm on my way. Alright. But yeah. Um, wrong way, wrong way, we'll wrong, way wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. What the? That thing's pointing that way. Why is it pointing that way? The heck? My GPS is all screwed up. I'm gonna pull you. <laughs> there, now it corrected itself. Okay. But yeah, that's what's going down next weekend, Friday. I am taking Friday off as long as nothing interferes work wise. That is what's gonna go down. So. Makes you wonder. Wait, church rats. Let's go check it out. Oh, it's a bounty. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right, so yeah, Wolfie, are we naming the podcast The Audacity? Or do we. We needed to come up with something a little more unique. I don't know if The Audacity quite. That might be already taken, I'm not sure. What's up, little buddy? Hi, what's up? All right, just gonna ignore those guys and keep going. Wait, what we'll is We'll talk about the name. Sounds good. We'll talk about the name. What's what? What is, what is the target? Uh, typically there's gonna be a doorway, something around here. Uh, it's most likely over here. Okay, well, now hold on. So this bounty thing is a random thing that we can encounter, or it's in a space that we can randomly encounter. Yeah, did but you want to do the bounty, or did yeah, you? Yeah, sure, to let's do, do it. The... Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, well, because it's way over here. Um, oh, okay. We're Cause... just fighting random blokes on the street. Yeah, because the uh, waypoint is actually increasing, like the meters from the target. The heck? Hold on, let me look at the map. The heck? Why is it pointing over there? Oh, it's an entrance we have to find. Oh. Oh, so they're underground, obviously. Yep, I think that's over here, actually. Church Ratch, that makes sense. Or doesn't interfere with your game. Yep, as long as it doesn't interfere. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Gotta do a few job apps, so if you talk to me, I may uh, need you to say my name a few times. Okay, I'll just scream your name at the top of my lungs. Should be something around here. Uh, ah, tunnel. Found it. No, okay, I'm coming. Well, I say as long as work doesn't interfere because uh, we're supposed, we are expecting a train to show up sometime this coming week or next week. I'm hoping it comes in the middle of this week so that way we can just get it done out of the way. But it's a, uh, it's a mill train, meaning we have to specially mix the protein content in the train to be an exact number across each car. And if it doesn't, we have to take all the wheat out of the car and then re redo it. So yeah. 
it's gonna uh, they give us uh it's gonna take us probably two days uh so 48 hours is what we get to load it now we are given that much time to load it but that's also giving us a little bit of time to sleep in between but most likely we're gonna be working a couple i don't know i honestly would not be surprised if we're gonna go into work work like a 18 hour shift sleep and then do another 18 hour shift if not longer so 48 hour so we're given two days to load the train and thankfully we will be able to rest a little bit in between that but 48 hours is what we got now so, you, so you're not gonna go zone. home no most likely not i'm gonna probably work for i don't know 12 to 18 hours sleeping on the cot in the office and then work in the other day probably so most likely and I'm not going to have fun because I'm the designated guy that has to do the mixing. So if I mess up, it means we have to redo stuff. So yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. looking forward to this. So, but at the same time, I was I understand their thought process because I'm probably the one person that... Uh, oh, we lost the bounty. We did. I'm not sure what happened there, but it's not essential or anything. It's just a random encounter thing. That's fine then. Well, I'm just saying 18-hour 18, 18 shift. I don't know. Maybe we'll work for 20 hours, sleep 8 hours, and work for another 20 hours. It could literally be anything. So I, I, I have no idea. This is the first train I've ever done like this because all of our other trains have always been 10 hours. We get 10 hours to load one train. This is one train, but they're giving us almost five times the amount of time to load it because they know it's going to take us a while. By the way, uh, made emergency move from AZ to North Carolina. Oh, really? It seems to be turning out for the best as I found a good job doing IT. Oh, here I will not have the opportunity in Phoenix. Well, that's good. That's really good. I'm happy to hear that, buddy. Uh -oh. oh, did we just walk into a checkpoint? Oh, uh, we did. Yep. Or a control point. <laughs> okay, I got a skill that's gonna help us here a little bit in the credit. Mm -hmm. He's dead. Okay. Pulse going out. And friendlies. Nice. Wait, that's literally it? Now they're gonna uh, counter attack. Oh, okay, here we go. Yep, enemies. Hold on, where's the second floor? I thought there was a second floor. Or is there not? There isn't. Never mind. Getting on the gun. Oh, they are confused. to hear that for you Jesus that's really good news I'm happy Detected. By hostiles. Uh, did I miss any other messages uh I try to do the no assist parkour makes you wonder if you know. okay and thank you for the lurk there Bryce greatly appreciated did we get a shout out for Bryce already yes we did streaming uh, red hot and mad third time in Through. Oh, shoot, that's not good. We did it. And the level up. No. Hey, there you go. Oh, yeah, I did level up. Nice. All right, so we got to go find that safe house. What we're doing? All right, let me mark it here. Alrighty. Oh, wait, supply room. Oh, right, right, right. So these control points have supply rooms. Yep. I think I found an LMG in the last one, but I didn't take it. Nice, okay. Uh, 
All right, ACR. Huh. Hey, not bad. I'll take it. So yeah, control points are spots that you essentially just constantly have to fight back and forth with and once you capture one you have to keep providing the officer there with materials as soon as you don't it becomes a lot easier for enemy factions to capture it so it's kind of a tug of war game mechanic and i get a better weapon from the proficiency crate are you kidding me <laughs> oh yeah no that can happen no, that's kind of just a random Potential. Who knows? Actually, I didn't realize I got crates. Let me open a few. Yeah, a few craft materials. Wait, no, it's not that much better. Eh. Going towards the junk pile. Yeah, no, sounds good and everything. You just know sounds good. If you got everything working, so what does your average night look like? And if you're in South Carolina, let me, hold on. What time is it for you right now? I'm still trying to, I don't really pay attention to the areas. I'm more or less just paying attention to the people in the areas, so. Oh, we're going the wrong way. My bad. No, I'm all good. I think if we just, uh, I'm going to walk down here. It's kind of a shortcut. Yoink. No, oh, always, yeah. No, oh, okay. Oh, wait. No, I won't. <laughs> it was actually the way to go. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. No, you were going the right way, but I just noticed the GPS line through an uh, alleyway that it doesn't... Uh, that the GPS wasn't actually lining up with, so oh. I just went that way. No, so. Okay. <laughs> It's nearly seven for you, so yeah, okay, so you are two hours ahead. It's almost five for me. Okay, no, that works. So in that case, Jesus, so what does your average, like, work day or weekday schedule look like? Like, in the evening when the kiddos go to bed? Like, for me, I'll put it this way. My kiddo typically goes to bed around seven to eight. Now, normally when I first get home at 5.30, I will spend about an hour and a half to two hours at home with the wife and the kiddo eating and just hanging out and getting in that family time. Uh, typically we do that while watching movies or just doing a few things together. Then after that, typically around 7.30 to 8 my time, which is going to be closer to 10 your time, is when the kiddo goes to bed. Now after that, that's when my wife and I will do stuff together or something. She'll I will either snuggle on the couch, play on our switches and watch animes together, or she'll go take a bath or do her own thing, and then I'll do my own thing. So... And then typically weekends are hit and miss with everything. Um, like some week, like next weekend, she's got a new DLC or something coming out for Hogwarts Legacy. So she's going to be playing that all weekend. And I'm doing my own thing. Then bedtime routine around nine. Around eight. Got it. Okay, okay. In that case, if I get done... So I'm going to be getting done with this around eight o'clock for you. Um... In which case, for like the uh, you know like work and stuff like that too, are you gonna be good or I mean technically eight to you so that's around six o'clock. So that kind of makes essentially weekends like a Saturday to be the best time for me to play. So, but sadly that's also typically weekends are when I try to schedule some of these other kind of things. So as long as we schedule it out far enough, I can typically I I can make stuff. Now, what the heck is in my mailbox? Oh. Wait, what's the next mission? We got the safe house? Um, yeah, we got the safe house, so I guess... Uh, um, Group augmentation activated. 
doubt it'd be midnight around midnight here. Yeah, no, exactly. And I don't, and that's the thing, I don't, I want to, I'm perfectly fine scheduling stuff. I just need to be able to schedule this stuff. So, like, next, honestly, I'm, I'll say this, uh, like, if next Saturday works, or even Friday or something like that, if you want to schedule a time that far ahead, uh, let me know, and I can easily move stuff around. It is not hard for me to move stuff around my schedule. The only thing in my schedule that I can't really move is work stuff and once something's already set in stone. But otherwise, I can still move stuff around. So just let me know, man. All right, so I picked up that, picked up that, picked up that. Okay, yeah, next main mission. Um, okay. Uh, oh, it's the Viewpoint Museum or the American History Museum. I think. So here's where you can check your missions and everything. So if you hit escape and go to progression. Yeah. And then in that window, you should underneath progression, you should see something for like main missions. So that yep, should yeah, show yeah, you yeah. what you currently have available. Yeah, so okay. viewpoint of American history. All right. That, uh, okay, let me find that here. Well, I, actually, no, no, hold on. It'll replay it once you select it. And once we go there, it'll replay it for me. So. Okay, let's go there. Detected. Okay. I yeah, no, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. I, I'll just follow you since you got it marked. So. Oh, I think I did. Group augmentation inactivated. Group augmentation active. Then I got or, nothing. In that case, you should be able to just pull up your map then and find it and then. Yeah. Mark it that way. Uh, new. That's a cache. American History Museum, you said? Yeah. Right here. Oh, that's a. St oh, oh, it's a story mission. Okay. Is that it? Uh, bureau headquarters. Almost south of us. Empire Autumn. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Dallas Galley, thank you very much for the follow. Really appreciate it. Welcome on into the stream. How are you doing this fine weekend? <laughs> you pick a fight with them, and then they go off and pick a fight with someone else. <laughs> We were not that interesting for them. <laughs> After seeing how bad the day before was, uh, being seen people uh, hop back in this game, and just makes me more excited for the Division Three as well as Saint Nick. I know, right, man? I, uh, we were oh, talking yeah, about they're the, making the, the Division Three, right? Yeah, they are making it. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So currently, the div the uh, division titles under development uh, is Division Heartland, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the free-to-play extraction shooter version uh, of the game. So kind uh, there's a few other elements too, but in short, I think that's what it's supposed to be: free-to-play extraction shooter. Uh, and then there is Division Resurgence, which is the mobile one that I've been playing, uh, the beta test for. Uh, my review video will be up uh, in a few days, so or maybe tomorrow, actually. Nice. But uh, yeah, that's another one. Ah, uh, that's another one that is. Uh, yeah. So it's pretty good, honestly. I think it's actually fantastic for mobile. It plays so nicely. It's really good too. And then yeah, so Division Three. So far, the last thing that I heard from their tweets and everything is that it is, it's confirmed, they're going to bring back the same people that worked on the first game in this one, and nice. they're going to make the third one. So it's the same people. They're going to come back, do bigger and better as uh, always, because honestly, the devs for mass Massive Entertainment are always really good. So I feel like they do, a, this is kind of, this is their baby. I'll put it that way. 
So well, as long as the Steam devs and they know what they don't. So yeah, exactly. So that's the thing. It's the same. Well, that's the thing. Yes, it's Ubisoft, but it's by Massive Entertainment, which is a newer studio that they re acquired back in 2016 or whatever when they made the first Division game. But at the same time, the Division franchise is pretty. It's the only. I'm pretty sure it's the only IP that Massive Entertainment makes. It's the only one. So that particular studio, I mean, this is their baby. Like this is it's their franchise. So it is their thing. It's not like they have like yes, Ubisoft as a company has multiple studios. Each studio is responsible for a different franchise. You got like what three different studios that have been tag teaming the Assassin's Creed franchise? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why they're all a little different, but Division has been exclusively massive entertainments, baby. And they're bringing back the same designers, the same director, same writers, same people. So it's going to be good. I, I got I got a really good feeling about Division 3 because it's the same people. They did good on listening to people from the first game to this game. So they made their improvements. So I've got a good feeling about it. So, But so far, all they said in their tweet is that they're bringing back the same people and that it will be made. Um... So, but currently we do know that's going to be a little bit because technically the guy that has been uh, the director and main guy that's been behind the first division game and this one, um, uh, technically the, that guy is working on uh, Star Wars Outlaws right now, Ooh, yeesh. which still isn't out. So, but. Uh, it is confirmed that uh, once he once that game is finished and wrapped up and out of the way, he's going to bring his attention back to Division Three. So, which honestly, I haven't been keeping up with with uh, Outlaws. So all I know is it's supposed to be a uh, open world, well, semi open world. I guess it's like open a uh, third person action adventure game with a story, and you can fly to different planets, and there's open areas planets. on the planet. Planets, yeah, yeah. You can fight different planets. Uh, it's not best way to put it. It's not like what. Um, what's the best way to put it? Uh, be the best way to put it. It's not gonna be like each planet is a massive. Uh, oh, oh, okay, oh, okay. Here's the best way I can probably put how um, Star Wars Outlaws is kind of meant to be. It's supposed to be... Have you ever played Star Wars... Uh, nope. Well, no Star Wars games. Nope. Okay. In that case, it's going to be hard to explain, but for anyone in chat, if you guys know the uh, the older game, the old MMO game, uh, Star Wars... Uh, honestly, it's literally the exact same game, just a little bit different, just not... The, the New Republic or whatever? Something like that? The Old Republic. Thank old, you. Yeah, Star old, Wars, old the Old Republic. Republic. Yep. The Old Republic. Um, it's that art. Uh, oh, that's better. Yet. Thank you, Jesus. Knights of the Old Republic. Thank you. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It's an old single player uh, RPG game. You pick your class kind of thing. You go through it and stuff like that. Yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. Exactly. That one. Star Wars Outlaws is supposed to be. It's not going to be a turn based action game because that one was a turn based RPG and stuff like that. Like almost literally Dungeons and Dragons mechanics with like. Uh, initiative, um, uh, initiatives and stuff like that. But Outlaws, you play a smuggler, and uh, that's the storyline. Single player, you have your party that you can get. It's an RPG action-like, but it's not turn-based. It's it's live action like this. It's oh, that's constant good. That's good. Tactics. So you run around, shoot stuff. There's me there's different mechanics and stuff like that. But you get your ship and everything that you and your crew stay in. You can fly from planet to planet, but the planets aren't massive open world areas. They're just, um, each planet has their own open area that you can explore, but it's not, they're not claiming it to be like a massive open world. Like each one is a massive place. Kind of like how Starfield did. I'm not sure, I'm not throwing shade, just saying. Mm, but yeah. How successful Boulder's Gate was. I was not surprised at all at how successful Baldur's Gate 3 was. No. It, all the awards it got, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. They deserve it. That oh, yeah, game yeah, yeah. totally deserved it. 
that game totally deserved to get those rewards. So I was not surprised by Baldur Gate at all. I, I was enjoying it, honestly. I, I still do enjoy it. I just haven't been playing it too much. I it I think it's really good. It's a great game. I'm just not huge into turn-based um, combat most of the time. It's just a little too slow for me, but it's still a good game. So. I, I actually got to agree with you there, Dallas. I was a little surprised as well by the fact that Spider-Man didn't get any rewards. At least not that I noticed. I didn't watch the rewards. I just glanced over. Oh, they, the... they got seven nominations and zero wins. They did. No, exactly. They got a lot of nominations. Just they didn't get anything, which sucks. There was a few other games there that I didn't even know existed. It's like, really? Huh. Interesting. I feel like I'm falling behind on chat here a little bit. Uh, nah, catch up, catch up. We can wait. Need to play more city. Get to I got exactly what prevents them full. Remind me, was there anything you need to do before releasing it? The video. All we need to do is uh, spruce up the description and then put the tags in. Uh, Tier, if you want, if you can handle that, that'd be great. If you just want, and then I'll go in and I'll schedule it. But if you want to just go in, throw in a description. I mean, I just grab the description off of a website or whatever the basic thing about the game is. Just like, hey, here's Iron's take on this upcoming free-to-play mobile game for 2024, Division Resurgence, and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, captured on Samsung Note 9 during the closed beta for December or whatever. Just put that in there and then just the tags and that's it then I can schedule it for a tomorrow release. So that way people can have a look and see what they think about Division Resurgence. Look, I even streamed it last night off the new phone. It looks, I gotta say, streaming on the new phone, it looks amazing. Honestly, the graphics definitely a step up from playing on that old phone of mine. Yeah, exactly, Dallas. It's gonna be good. They know what to improve. It's the same people that work on the game, which honestly is a good way to go. When a game franchise changes hands between studios and a massive company it ruins the games i don't it doesn't do good i i really don't feel like it does good we could see raids in dark zones uh, possibly i'm not too much on the pvp side so want a proper vr jedi sith based star wars game you'll, you'll get one uh it was funny because that game would not have been crowdfunding they did for it. Which one? Starfield? I'm trying to go check. Uh, is this year? I said this years ago, but uh, what do you think about this? I think Epic Games, from the beginning, their plan was to get all the different licensed skins in the game. Uh, to one day release a MMO version of Fortnite as a so they added different game uh, modes in it. Possibly, yeah. The tags are there, but I would not trust myself with the description. I'll fill the description out. If you got the tags, then I'll do the description. Not a problem. I think that's their end game plan. BG3. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll cut it. Wait a minute. Something's what? missing over here. What? I thought that it would have four of Finding Fathers, not three. On the wall. Oh, yeah. Now that I step back and look at it. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, wait. No, this is this... obvious. Copy paste it. You see that? Yep, yeah, that yeah, yeah. And that are the same. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. They did. Hey, don't shoot your president. What do you mean? Oops. I thought you were okay, a patriot. I, I, uh, mm, mm. I am a little bit of a patriot. You can't be a little bit, you have to be a lot. No, okay, I have to be the, the too far gone patriot. Oh. Yes. Guns and stuff. Bah. <laughs> Everything's a conspiracy theory. Bah. Okay, now I do believe I do believe in some conspiracy theories because I mean the fact that you don't that somebody wouldn't believe in a conspiracy theory is a little suspicious of itself. And I mean, that's a conspiracy on. theory? With, in itself? <laughs> not be or I don't know, maybe. I don't know. But I mean, think of it, I mean, just think about it for a second. I mean, with all of the different conspiracy theories out there, all of them, you don't believe even in one? I mean, most likely you believe in some sort of a theory that isn't exactly proven. So. Yeah. So, me. 
Fortnite having an MMO would be crazy. Cool. It would be. It would be. I wouldn't be surprised if Epic did something like that with it. Oh, Ooh, look at trick. this. Ooh. Oh, please tell me. Can I crawl up in here? Oh, let me up. 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 <laughs> no. Now, ima imagine this is uh, your 48 hour day. Well, work day. Dude, I know how much it would be, but. Dude, I would totally, I would take a major pay cut to work on and drive trains like this, man. 100%. I would move states or countries if I could just become a simple train conductor or engineer on a simple small line in a country somewhere where I don't have to work for a freaking union. So. Wait, I thought unions were good. It depends on the unions. My, my so union is decent. Good. Okay, that's good. Um, no, it, it really just depends on the union because, like, your union's pretty good. Like, UPS and stuff like that is okay. But the train union... Uh, so all the major train lines here in the U.S. are unions, and they are not good. Mm -hmm. they, they are not good at Br all. Bring back the Teamsters, so, right? To their glory. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being muted. No! Oh, wait, is this Discord as well? Not if it's a yes. Ah, oh. okay, let's go then. Look at this motorcycle. Look at this motorcycle. Oh, hello. We're not destroying all these vintage cars, are we? That would suck. Ooh, a bus. Would you look at that chat? Iron's not talking and we're progressing the game. We're gonna complete the game in the two minutes. <laughs> don't forget I can kinda read lips. So don't be mouthing me off. <laughs> Two sons reinforcements. Oh, they're here. Okay, I'm back. Nice. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Was that comment really necessary? Uh oh, if, uh, whoa, whoa, big whoa, guy. whoa. I'm out of here. Oh, grenade or two. Watch it. Oh, he did. Nice. Oh, Good job. Good job. Hey, Maz. How's it going? Thanks for muting me. Again, I feel like I should just do something else in addition to the mute thing. 
as a quicker method for my mods just to say, hey, shut up. Got to think about that. Oh, that was a minigun. Oh, man. Yeah, we could have used that. Uh, well, okay, I'll take that back. So, not all unions are bad. I should clarify. The train unions here in the U.S. are not good. So, so that's where most likely it's kind of the thing where unless they fix themselves up a little bit more, um, I would not go work for any train thing anywhere uh, unless it was in a different country, probably, and if they were better. So... Now, granted, there are still some small, locally owned lines, especially even my area, but they don't really do anything. It's more like the town or the county owns the train, and they use it to move some things around. But all they do is that it it's just an off branch that connects to a main branch that a different company owns. So. We have yeah, to go down, right? We have to go down? Um, I, yes. Okay, let's go down. Yeah, Maz, how have you been, buddy? I'm part of the pipe lifters union. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Green union have to fight against the common carrier mess. They do. So I can bet you on the downside. you all down with none of the good stuff because they are cut off at the knees with common carrier laws. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Those locals are cool. Yeah. Well, like, here's an example. We talked about this just a little bit ago. Here's the example of, um... Well, a lot of you guys know about that, um... Strike that was gonna happen a year ago in the U.S. Uh, for the train. Like, all the major train lines and companies. There's, like, seven or eight of them. Major ones. Passenger and freight. So, there was a lot of different things that were going down about that. But one of the bigger things that one of the local ones up here in this air neck of the woods of the U.S., known as BNSF. Um, one of their issues, out of multiple, that people were very upset about was their uh, time off. Because it was a very stupid system that also did not... It wasn't a very good system either. It was not friendly for the uh, employees because the way it worked is what would happen oh jeez um there we go what would happen is when you start working for bnsf you get it's a point system you get like i don't know 30 some points and a point counts for a day or something like that i think or half a day so but that is your time off that is your vacation sick time everything uh, that is what you use to take a day off even if, like, oh, you have to take a day off to take care of your family, your kids, or anything like that when they're sick, school days, anything. Literally, you miss your shift or a day or whatever, you use up a point or whatever it may be. Now, that might not seem too bad, especially since you start with 30-something. To get one point back, you have to work two weeks in a row without missing a day to get one point back. So. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, one thing I don't get about the American system, right? What what um, are the sick days? Sick days are so it depends on the company. Now it actually changes. So sick days are when like you're actually like sick. So like if you become unexpectedly ill, you can take a sick day where you can call out of a shift for a day or two with no repercussions. Right. And then you have vacation time where you are uh, you can choose to essentially get a typically a week, but sometimes it can vary uh, time off and everything. Now, that's not for sick leave. Some people do use their sick leave hours. Now, again, I'm saying this because some companies uh, divide those up into different categories. So you have sick leave and then you have vacation time. So it's two separate things. But. Some people will use their sick leave as vacation time. You know, they'll just call out sick. Where oh. Whereabouts, they might not actually be sick. They're just using their sick leave time as time off. So that's how some companies do it. But I would say probably 
more times than not, some companies just use something as PTO, which is just paid time off, which is used for both of that. So, for example, for me, I got PTO. I get two days worth of paid time off, or sorry, two and a half days every month. So then I use that for sick and vacation. Now, I'm not really going to argue if this is better or not because I haven't really found out yet. But if I want a couple days off on a week or an extra day off on a weekend, I can. I can just say, hey, I want this weekend off. And if there's no good reason for me to come into work, then I get the day off. So I can just request it to be whenever. Or if I want to save up enough and do a whole week of vacation, I can do that. But this is also the same, uh, I guess you could say, pool of time that I pull from whenever I get sick. So whenever I get sick for a couple days, or whatever, or however long, I gotta use my PTO. So that's kind of where it sucks a little bit. If you're a person that can get sick easily, or like you got kids or whatever, or you normally would get sick a couple times a year, so you might have like two to three days there of where you're gonna use up PTO, which could also be your vacation time. So, yeah. So it depends on the company a lot of the times, so. So if it's something, well, especially like if I feel a little sick or something like that, I will still go into work because thankfully with my work, it's not hard for me to segregate myself from my, the other workers. Um, because I am not working in a line of, in a particular field where I am around people all the time, even my own coworkers. It is very easy for me just to say, hey, I'm gonna do this side of receiving and then I just do that for the day. I don't even go anywhere near what other people are touching at all. Oh. So it's easy. Normally, I only call out if I'm like bedridden, sick, or puking up, you know, my innards and stuff like that. Like I physically cannot do something. Like, well, heck, uh, last time I got majorly sick, that's what I did. I was throwing up at work. I was having a hard time. It might have been heat stroke. I'm not entirely sure. But it's like, oh yeah, I threw up in the morning. Okay, I thought it was food poisoning because it was the meal that I had the previous night. But then after throwing it all up, I felt good. I was drinking, we're outside doing some work. Probably pushed myself too hard because I'm stubborn that way. And to the point where I couldn't keep down any liquids and just in the middle of working, I just had to kneel down and just stop for a minute. So, and then I took the next day off, so. No. Well, uh, here it's basically, if you get sick, you just call your family doctor and you get a paid time you off, know. basically. Ah, nice, okay. But you you don't get full full pay, you get like 60%. Oh, okay. Yeah, here, again, it depends on the company. Some companies will require you to bring in like a doctor's note if it's something like extremely serious. Oh, they, um, they see everything here. Like, after the visit, the company will know immediately. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's actually interesting. Here you don't. You got to go to a doctor and have them write up a note and sign it. So then you can take it to your employer and then that way it tells your employer, oh, yeah. No, the doctor says I'm too far gone. You can't. I can't work. So like so uh, no school. Yeah. They, <laughs> they do dress you like that. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's not a perfect system. There. That's one thing. I don't consider myself much of like a patriot American or whatever. I do know there are things that the U.S. needs to change heavily, uh, <laughs> but there's still some other things that don't need to. Yeah. American work culture is dangerous. It is. It honestly is stupidly dangerous. Also, hey, someone welcome back. Me with migraines. Yeah, yeah, Wolfie, exactly. So. I can't wait to go full time where I'm at benefits, PTO, vacation, pension, uh, public works, student loans, uh, forgiveness, stuff like that. Heck yeah. I use all my sick days as much as possible until just before the point it became a. Uh, oh, really? Oh, geez. Just, uh, just running with the sick voice. No questions asked. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what, uh, not gonna lie, that's kind of what I've done a few times too with my work, so, yeah. So yeah, no, it, 
in the U.S., there are a lot of laws for stuff, yes. But another another thing, again, with the U.S., there's 50 different states. There's two different types of law, federal and state. You really got to know the difference between the two because what one law is in one state, it might just be a law state, in which case it could change depending on the other states you go to. A federal law is everywhere, so companies have to abide to it. So it does change depending on where you are and everything. And also some companies, depending on even how companies are set up, there's loopholes. Some companies can get away with stuff. So, yeah. yeah it's interesting. We're a family. We Nope, not. Not a family. <laughs> not one, the only kind of family work, the only kind of family job is literally a family job. Like a ranch or something or a family owned restaurant or something. That's a family job. But at no other point, no, absolutely not. So uh, I think we're gonna go do the Air and Space Museum and Air and Space? call it, okay. and call it for the day. Oh, okay, yep, that works for me. Yeah, fine by me. Fun fact: Montana is the only non-at-will employment state. Mm -hmm. Hold on, now I'm getting texts. Hold on, the wife is texting me. Can I auto okay. run? No, never mind. All right, I'll just yeah, do this. Oh, I, I'll wait up. I'll wait up. All right, just give me a hot second. I got to text. Uh, who's texting me? The kid from bed, probably. He doesn't have a phone yet. He's not getting a phone until he can pay for it. So never? Yeah. Well, nice. <laughs> that's actually one thing that the wife and I are going to work on. We might give him, we'll give him an allowance, but he it's chore-based allowance. So... He'll have to do something in order to get the allowance. Because money ain't free. He's got to understand the simple fact that he's got to do something to get money in this world. Or favors. We're also probably going to implement a barter system. Jump inside the cart, I'll push you. Well, and that's kind of another thing is just how, uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's 2023. You get money for free. <laughs> nope. All right, get inside the car. I'll push around. Well, you, and you can text. I can I even get in it? I don't think I can. Nope. Nope. Well, yeah, I'm kind of inside. Oh, well, let's go. Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, let me back up a little bit. Yeah, no, exactly, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. That means that out of uh, all 50 states, Montana's the only one that has that. Meaning, yes, you can literally be fired for no reason at all. So you can be terminated. Essentially, uh, you can be terminated for any reason. So, but there is also the probation period. So that's another thing to consider. So you got to keep that in mind, too. So most of the time, once you're past the probation period, then they do need an actual reason. So... But during that probational uh, period, yes, you can just be let go for any reason at all. So Is the probation period three months? Uh, six months. Oh, yeesh. 
So yeah, technically in six months, uh, an em technically uh, an employer in Montana, uh, if you've been working for them for six months, they can literally let you go for no reason at all. And you, it's, yeah, just because. So, but after that probational period is when, um, technically is when you actually do kind of get brought on. There's a lot of extra contract and paperwork stuff that does come into it. De again, depending on the company, some of the companies do it differently. So some companies, even though those laws are in uh, place, some companies in Montana or workplaces do actually have a contract that once you go through the probational period, some companies are only three months. Um, example, tractor supply. I work for tractor supply. I was on a probational period for three months, meaning they could have fired me at any given time in those three months, and I would not, for no reason, or a reason, and I couldn't do anything about it. But after the three months, the company did have a thing that I then signed. So, at which point, they would need to have a reason to fire me. So... Whistleblowing race, uh, reporting things, or et cetera. Mm, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Still. Jitterbug mm -hmm. phone. Yep, Jitterbug phone. Employment, uh, you and the employer can decide to terminate employment with reason or no reason at all. You are the employer? You or the employer. Oh, yeah, no, and we have at will and uh, I, I forgot the at will employment or whatever that thing is. The whole thing where either party essentially, well, technically, that is a whole thing in all 50 states where technically, yes, uh, depending. Yeah. Uh, what is that? The at will employment? The at will employment act? Meaning, technically in all 50 states, if I remember correctly, meaning you can literally walk out on a job. You don't have to give a notice. You can literally walk out and there's nothing anybody could do about it. Same thing with employers, though? If I'm not mistaken, hold on, let me look that up again. Uh. Yeah, because like in Montana, we do have that probational period, but technically after that, employers do need a probable cause to fire someone. So now, granted, it doesn't have anything to do with the whole like notice thing, because what was that the name of that thing again? That act? I forgot what it was. That's only in Montana that they need a reason? Wait, after the probational period? No, they kind of do. Still in Montana. Even after the probational period, they still kind of need to. But it, again, it depends on the company, because some companies actually do write something. So, yeah. Probation is over. Yep, I yep, I've seen that too. One provision. For a short term, exactly sinful. That's what a lot of those kind of companies do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Unless you have the contract out signed otherwise, which most of the time people should be smart enough to negotiate something like that. But yeah. But again, it depends on a lot of different things. There's a lot of elements I can. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not talking about the at will act. I'm talking about that other one. Or is it the at will act? I forgot. Man, I forgot what it was.
Because again, technically, you can negotiate. That's another thing. You can negotiate a contract. So, yes, even though it's not a state law, it is still in the power of the employees to negotiate the term for wrongful employment. So, in which case, it becomes a case of the employees breaking a contract. So, that's really where it all sits. So, yeah. With right to work. Nah, I wasn't confused with right to work. I was thinking of something else I recently heard of. I forgot what it was called. It was something, something. I don't recall it where it was now. <sighs> See, Montana is one of the only states uh, whose laws allow for employees to have an extra layer of protection. In other states, employers can fire an uncontracted at will employee at any time and for any legal reason. In Montana, work at will laws only apply during a probation period that is a standard of six months, unless otherwise established at a time uh, at the time of employment. Until conclusion of the probational period, Montana employers must have valid cause in order to terminate one's employment. So, hold on, I think I got this back. At will also allows the employers to adjust the terms of employment with employees at the time or at any time for any reason without legal consequences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that sounds right. The employer may alter benefits, reduce time off, or change wage agreements without consent of the employee. Yep, that's right. Hang on, get a phone call from the wife.
Okay, I'm back. I did not realize that I was still muted on Discord. No, that's fine. I did the Dirt. Metal Ruins one. Oh, nice. Okay, I was about to just come down there, so... Yeah, you, there's a supply Ooh. room open. Ah, cool. I forgot how to even get down there. Uh, you're going the wrong way. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I always am. And on the right. The, hey, Arto, how's it going? The big there's thing. No go down. Right here. The what now? Wait, let, let me... I gotta run around because there's a big fence stopping me from getting in there. So there's yeah, you're going certain... you're going the right way and then on the left. No, 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 no. Left. Left. Oh, here we go. No, no, behind you. Yep, 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 yep. I'm, I'm, my, your stream might be a few seconds behind. Yep, got it. All right. Okay. Good day to you, Yaruto. How are you this fine day, my good man? Edmund, hey! How goes the sniping? Oh, not much of a sniper. More of a shotgun. But I'm Close doing... And personal. Yep. Hey, <laughs> cheers. Yep. Cheers to you too. Can the Red Bull stay alive? Ah. How's life for you? Right, what what did I get even? Oh, here we go. My strange cleaner. Yep. You're exactly right. <laughs> Wait, maximum rifle. Eh, I don't feel snipers in this game, to be honest. So into the. And equip. There we go. There we go. Ah, boy, oh. Proficient cash. An AUG? Hey. Wait a minute. How is an AUG a submachine gun? Good question. I have no idea. Let's check it out. I mean, no way it's a submachine gun. Alright, you're good, you're good. What are you? Nope. 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 Wait, hold on. Jesus, can you confirm? Wait, so hold on, Jesus. So the at will laws and everything as well. So hold on, you wait a minute. So. At, in the other states, with an at will, it also allows an employer to adjust terms of an, of the employment with employees at any time, for any reason, without legal re, uh, consequences. So, meaning the employer can alter benefits, reduce time off, and even change the wage agreements. That's stupid. Hold on. Well, because they can't do that here. I mean, that's not. Oh, what? And for. So they can lower your wages for any given reason? I did not freaking know that. I thought that ha I thought whoa. Seriously? Unless it's otherwise specified in a contract? Dude, what the hell? No, oh, check your uh salary <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> well, they might I'm be fine because in Montana they can't. No, no then you're good then. Yeah, no, I'm fine. If they're scamming money, then dude, what the heck? No, 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 no. I mean, you'd know, so yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah. All they have to do is notify you, but they don't have to, but they can do anything they want with no consent. Damn. So, uh, all, 49, the other 49 states do this. Okay, I'm going to say I'm pretty ignorant to this kind of stuff because I've only ever lived in Montana. This is literally where I've spent my entire life, and I've never really cared about another state enough to learn about it. So. <laughs> That is interesting. Unless you have a legal agreement. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to have the legal agreement. Damn. Seriously? Yeah, they can't do... Whoa, okay. Because, yeah, that's protected here. Yeah. Gee, well, to a degree, anyway. Damn. What? You learn something new every day. And again, I am ignorant to this kind of stuff because, again, I've only ever lived and done anything in Montana. I never cared about another state enough to look up anything or know how they operate. Because I never really considered leaving Montana. And you are now? Uh, no. <laughs> only time I'm going to leave the U.S. is if I'm going to another s s country. They can say, I hate your uh, plane rates so you're fired. Yeah, no, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they, thankfully, they can't happen here. So, they need to have a, a legal reason, which also kind of makes it interesting. So, yeah. You have an unpleasant face, you're fired. Yeah. Which does suck. Man, seriously? Here, at least for all the corporate jobs I ever worked at, they needed a reason. Because I'm not going to lie. Um, uh,. I won't drop names, but during my time working at Tractor Supply, um, we had someone, we discovered somebody was skimming money out of the registers, and it was a worker. So, again, no names or anything. This has also been years ago. But what happened is we discovered, I discovered it, actually. I was a closing shift, and I was counting tills, and I found out, hey, this till's short so much. We're supposed to have X amount inside the tills. And it's short, not by... It was short by enough where it's like, okay, sometimes you might have like a buck or a few cents here because somebody gave out too much change or something or not enough change, depending. So that's where there'd be like slight adjustments there. But when it's 20 to 50 bucks, oh. almost perfectly, Yeesh. you know that, okay, it's like someone skimming a $20 bill. So, but here's the thing. I discovered that. We found out that somebody was skimming. The thing is... Uh, we ended up getting down to we suspected it was a certain person but the thing is we couldn't fire them just off of that suspicion or for no reason or anything like that at all because yeah so we literally had to find proof we did we went back and looked at the camera footage and we found it so there was cameras above the registers so we did literally have a reason to get rid of them and that was the reason so but that's, that is interesting. Again, I am very ignorant to how other states' laws work because, again, I very rarely ever go to another state, so yeah. Why is this box like this? What the hell? Uh, we can't think of a good reason to keep you goodbye. In other states, yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah, no, here in Montana, you got a little more protection. We can't be the only state. Seriously? The hell? Man, we have it good here then. You do. Honestly, Montana. Mm, not Montana. The U.S. has some good things going for them, but there's other things that... Mm, nope. So... Damn. That's disgusting. The only, <laughs> the only one state out of all 50... Where the employees protected from being discriminated against and instantly dropped. Damn. Granted, though, as soon as they have a reason to fire you, then you will be dropped like a hot potato. So. Ooh, drop, 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 drop. Give me something good. Well, now I got a new thing to wrap my head around. Ooh. Ugh. Yeah, now I really don't want to leave the state, even though it is yeah. depressing. Oh, they can't discriminate. But if they just have another reason. <laughs> yeah, right. Yuck. 
But they do have to give a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least. The number one thing you always do in a division game, close the doors. Why is that a mechanic? No idea, but it's fun. Every bun. Okay, talk. Okay, really quick. Talking about like a little dicky thing they put into games and whatnot. Wait, you can like, close doors here? What? If you see an open door on a vehicle, run into it. Like this van right here. The door looks open. Run into it. Okay. Bonk. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's a little thing that they had in the first game too. Now, is it important? No. Does it really do anything? No. But the biggest thing we always did whenever you're running down the streets in the first game is you run along the doors uh, to get them to be forced closed, which is hilarious. Montana by Frank Zappa. Mm, Montana by Frank Zappa is a good one. Montana by Al City is another good song as well. It's, it's good. I like it. So. Uh, can't be due to physical appearance as that is a federal protected uh, class. That is. That is. It cannot be due to physical defects or disorders, the religion, or any other federal class. Exactly. It can't yeah. be for those reasons. <laughs> yeah. So. Man, you ugly. You're fired. <laughs> yeah. They usually put down no reason reasons for discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. In some places. Man. All right. Next mission. Yep. Let's go. Uh, thanks. Yeah, Bryce is, yeah, no, exactly. There's that whole deal, too. The ramp to the parking garage looks like your best way in. Uh, there's ammo if you need to restock. Copy. Well, again, with my ammo thing, I constantly get back ammo, so I yeah. should be good for the time being. Yep, going in. Okay. The sniper. Got him. Jeez. Oh, you learn something every day. The fair labor. Yeah, the fair labor. I think that might have been the one I was thinking about. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I honestly don't remember which one I was particularly thinking about. Yeah. Oh yeah, heard that we're probably going to be getting a German manufacturing company uh, moving in locally here uh, to my area, which would be kind of interesting. Making medical uh, equipment. Going to bring in 50 new jobs, and by the end of 2026, they hope to have 500 jobs in the area. So, oh, nice. We'll see what happens. It wasn't discriminatory. Yeah, exactly. They don't have to prove or anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need to figure exactly. out what they're doing Which is here. dumb. See if you can find any intel on their operation. Portable device detected. Seems like the employer uh, was... They craft you bastards. Says discrimination, they must prove their case with... Oh, that's dumb. Crazy world we live in. Crazy, crazy. And it gets worse every day. It does. It really does. Uh oh, the guy. Catch. Working on the big guy. Right, big guy's down. Nice. Level up. Oh, where's this other guy? There you are. Got him. Uh oh. Uh, more down. Getting their medic down so we don't have to worry about him. 
got an engineer or something. Yeah. Keep moving. Still got two halls to clear. Boom. Bada bing bada boom. This looks good. We gotta secure that ordinance. No! And another thing though about the whole stuff with here in Montana and whatnot. Yes, sure you might get a little more protection during that probational period and whatnot. But I will also say some companies, you gotta be careful again. My child's been eight. Some mine didn't do it, but some companies, uh, they actually during that probational period, yes, you are protected from being you are protected, technically, but what some uh, employers do, they might give different reasons, either because they want to try to keep you around or testing you or whatever. They typically don't allow some benefits or like PTO or stuff like that to kick in until after that probational period. So that's another thing to kind of look at. Uh, it depends on a few things. So mine didn't. I think, was it Tractor Supply or was it a different company that I heard about that moved into Montana? Which one was that? Where if you started working there, you had that probational period, but you also didn't get anything extra until after it. Which then came to the contract side too. So depends on if you contracted out anything or not. It all depends. Uh, you cannot uh, benefit from union benefits if you are in a union place until after your promotion. Yep, exactly. So it just depends. Oh, no, not to plane. Well, that just came crashing on down. It's interesting. I'm aware the battery is low in my headset. Make it. Wait, we missed one. That's all interesting. The hell? Wait, hold on. Is someone inside the airplane? Um. Yeah, one's downstairs. Yeah, we got it. Hold up. Acting. Hello? Yep. Okay, you can hear me? Okay, hold on. Yeah. I gotta fix. I gotta fix this. The heck was that? Okay, there we go. Fix it. Uh, the worst thing about Montana is that literally there is nothing around for miles. Pretty well, well, no, 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 no. I can name some other stuff about Montana that. And miles and miles and miles. Yes, I will agree that it's probably one of the biggest things about Montana is the fact that it's the fourth largest state, but out of all 50, number one being the most populated, 50 being the least, we rank like 49 or something like that. So we are drastically underpopulated. There are. There's, every, there's five cows to every one person in Montana. I'll put it that way. So, we got a very big cow population. But anyway, yeah, it is very big, and that's kind of what makes the state a little bit of a depressing state, too, is because, essentially, you have to go pretty, pretty far to get anywhere actually noteworthy, unless you live in those noteworthy spots. But then the problem is the noteworthy spots are kind of crappy. So, yeah. Because there are some of the cities around and whatnot that, you know, that's where you can do stuff when it comes to your... Well, it depends on what you mean by doing stuff. If you mean the same old thing, yeah. Turn the heat on. No, we don't ever turn the heat on, ever. Mm -mm. We just like the air conditioning on cold all the time. Same as Alaska. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
The cattle could revolt. They could revolt. <laughs> Wait, you you don't get here. snow? Mm -hmm. Oh no, we definitely get snow. Oh no, we do. Alaska's worse, but no, we're, we're always cold. So, 50 degrees is a uh, uh, Fahrenheit is, you know, a heat wave for us. That is, like, unbearable for us up here. Okay? No. We walk around in t-shirts in, like, 40-degree weather. Okay? Like, literally. What was it, two days ago? No, literally last night. I was walking around just in, in this shirt. I had nothing else on, no jacket, nothing else underneath. It was 30 degrees. It was comfortable out. That was very comfy. Wait, 40 degrees. So what's that in normal... Uh... Oh, that would have been somewhere near zero Celsius, close to it anyway. Wait, probably, it's 32, know. right? For uh, Celsius. Well, and... 30, yeah, so 30 Fahrenheit is zero Celsius. So 40, I don't know, uh, slightly it's above. Like two or three? Past the... Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, that's... yeah, no, it's not bad. Yeah, exactly. See, that's what I'm saying. It's not bad. That's t-shirt and short sweat and, you know, flip-flop weather. So that's not bad. Well, currently here it's negative 10 Celsius. Oh, nice. I mean, look at what my temperature is here today. Uh, yeah, no, we don't turn the heat up at all, Orion. We really don't. We like our... But the thing is, there are definitely some things about Montana that sad, I am sad about. The fact that we are very... A lot of people here are pretty old. Thankfully, the... Uh, depending on the places you go to, there are some younger generations of people moving into Montana. But there are certain towns and cities that it's just old people. And I'm talking racist old people. So, yeah. You're going to have some people not give an absolute crap about your feelings, and they will say stuff to you. Now, most likely they won't do anything, but they are not afraid to say anything to your face. So, they won't cobble your feelings. Well, is and that bad, likely... honestly? Well, it's it depends. I will say there are some people that are definitely, you know, extreme racists that, you know, the classic ones, you could say. Yeah. Uh, there are some of those. Around. But, no, there are a lot of people around here. People do not care about who you are, where you're from anything about you as long as you aren't as long as you're not stepping on anyone else's toes or doing anything to anyone else they're not gonna have a problem with you. you can have your stuff they will voice their opinions but they won't do it so but as soon as you start doing something stuff happens up here that people don't normally will ever know about hence as i've talked about multiple times there is Thank you for that sunburn. Also, hey, sunburn, how's it going? Sunburn, you can attest to this. Um, you know how it is in Montana with the uh, Indian reservations. Oh, the kidnappings? The kidnappings, disappearings, and uh, local and government authorities do not have any say in the matter. They cannot do anything. So, and we've got multiple here. So, whatever you do, I'm just saying, major issue oh it is hugely an issue oh yeah do not go to an, a reservation alone easy to get lost exactly there is a lot of land in montana there is it's very big very open there's small towns all over the place some of them are questionable some of them are thankfully not so questionable and people like to keep to their own that's probably the i think that's the biggest thing about montanans we like to keep to our own if you're just here to visit, say hi, stuff like that, we will be the friendliest hosts ever. You're here to stay and want to change something or change our way of life, you're gonna probably have a few people have a problem. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's, you know, out here, the sheriffs, they are the people. So it, in the towns, you got stuff like that. But again, there's literally hours worth of driving in between towns or anywhere noteworthy or anywhere where a sheriff or any form of law enforcement is. I'll put it this way. The town I live in, we have a sheriff that lives outside of town. He lives about three miles outside of town. And that's our sheriff. But then you've got 
essentially the next nearest location that has any form of law enforcement is 45 minutes worth of a highway drive. 45 miles Oof. away. Damn. So, and that's only in my area. There are bigger pockets like that further away. So, yeah. I will honestly say, even though it's not really a thing that is practiced or done, I will say, keep the mindset of the, you know, the law of the land, where if you're going to talk big, be sure you can defend your point well. Because, yeah. Well, again, literally, the <laughs> I mean, most of you should probably already know this, maybe not, I don't know, but Montana's uh, tourist logo, because most states have a tourist uh, slogan, sorry, slogan. It's our little saying that we have for our tourists. Montana's is get lost. Take that as a welcome or as a end or as a, uh, you know, thing to go explore or literally that's up to you. But Montana's tourist slogan is get lost. And in fine print at the very bottom, it says in Montana. So <laughs> that's where it, I've actually had a few people read that at a gas station and they were like from some other state passing through and stuff like that they're like wait get lost like that's kind of mean don't you think it's like well in the bottom it says get lost in montana in fine print like in very very small fine print you got to really squint to see it and it's funny but yeah otherwise yeah 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 access key detected I'm very persistent it's a real issue i'll keep asking it's very per Persistence a real issue. There's a way of life in places uh, like that, and don't want to change. Exactly. I think that's the best way to describe Montana. Is that we are very actually. It is a big flaw too. In some areas, in some ways, I do consider it to be somewhat of an of a good thing. But sometimes you get that aspect of you're too stuck in your ways. Now I will say that is a little negative when it comes to some towns. Well, I can actually attest to a couple of the small, one of the towns in my area here, kind of like the main one that people go to for groceries and such. The council, I will say, the town's people don't agree, but the town council are actually very much against um, progress. Like I mentioned a little bit ago, there is a German manufacturing company that wants to open up a factory in Montana. They're either going to do it, I'll name this, the towns, either Lewistown or Missoula. They were looking at one of the two spots. They wanted to bring jobs there. They, the CEO of the company, it's a family owned company in Germany. That's where they're based out of. They want to open up a location in Montana. So what they are doing, um, you can test that also. Yes, sun, yep, exactly, sunburn. That's another thing about Montana is that several towns, not the state, I wouldn't say the whole state, but I would say that a lot of towns or cities can be very stuck in their ways. So if you can get some younger folk or people that are a little bit more open-minded on the council, then there's hope. But like an example, this company that wants to move in, uh, they make stuff, they make all sorts of electronics for medical and military um, applications and industrial. So they want to move into Lewistown is the city that they want to move to now. They've talked to our governor, uh, Gene Forte. Uh, managed to negotiate. Okay, they want a certain area in Lewistown. Okay, was able to negotiate it. So it has been a okay. So, but the problem is that the council in Lewistown are being very pushbacky about wanting a whole other manufacturing place to come in. Reason being is they like the way that Lewistown is. They don't want it to get bigger which is me as well as a lot of other people in Lewistown will agree is going to kill the town right now all it is is a retirement city is all it is slash town it's not a city it's a town it's so small so yeah kind of sucks talk to the hostage where's the hostage hey on the other side of the building a hundred it's telling me I'm getting too far away yeah it's nope. uh... Over, wait, what? Hmm? Oh. Yeah, I got messed up because there are two hostages and one's over here. 
Oh, okay. Cool. But yeah, it's interesting. Montana's big. Not the biggest, but the fact is that it's big with not a lot of people. So, yeah. Exactly. That is why Montana is filled with ghost towns. It's because a lot of people wanted to move in. They so many ghost towns so many little towns littered throughout everywhere like literally if the populations of these towns actually stayed in everything then montana would be littered with towns every few dozen miles down a highway just like most other states but the fact is that mm, just because of the people as well as industries and stuff like that these states didn't or the towns didn't grow instead they moved to other towns and those towns became bigger and are somewhat self-sustaining but there's a reason that kids that are born in Lewistown leave as soon as they graduate high school so yeah actually I'm not gonna lie uh, my wife has a teenage co-worker who's almost about to graduate high school uh, her and her boyfriend are leaving this area and going down to a different city in Montana uh, just to get away from this, or to get away from Lewistown, to get away from parents and stuff like that, and just the way it is. Of literally nothing. Mm -hmm. Not even ghost towns, just desert. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, my good man, uh, what do you say? You done? Yeah, I think I'm done for today. Uh, okay. I think we can schedule another session in the future. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we'll I'm talk about it in Discord. Place. Yeah, no, let's schedule another time. And uh, we can maybe get a couple other people in here, too. Yeah, so yeah, 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 definitely. Squads. Heck, if anything, just schedule an event, whatever works best for you, and I'll try to make it. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk beforehand for the, uh, I'll yeah. Do the event. Yeah, no, that works. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching us play, basically. And yeah, no, thanks. Uh, I'll see you next time. Sounds like a plan, buddy. You take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, you too.